What's up guys, V here for another platinum walkthrough for you. This time it's gonna be for the little indie that is Tux and Fanny. This guide will work as both a platinum guide and an overall game guide. Along with all trophies and achievements, you will also get all 452 points available in the game. You'll be looking at around six to eight hours or so to get everything, depending on your luck with some of the video games, most notably the Tim Tooth game, which can take you anywhere from five minutes to over an hour. So just make sure you're prepared when we get to that point. All of the timestamps for the items and collectibles that are picked up are provided below, just in case you're looking for something specific. Outside of that, this will be your general point and click adventure game. So let's go ahead and get this started. There are two characters to choose from, and while you can play whoever you fancy, it is recommended you stick with the characters shown in the video, since we will start to switch between them quite a bit once the map opens up. We'll be starting with Tux, who is the pink gentleman here on the left, so go ahead and select him to start up the game. Okay, so at the very start, we're just going to interact with the soccer ball up here, and it is going to be deflated. This is going to be the main, I guess, quest line of the game, if you will. It's going to be to re-inflate this ball so that we can play with it. But of course, we're going to be doing a million things between then and now. So for now, we're just going to exit out of that and then go inside the house. And then interact with the TV. And this is just going to show us that the TV is broken and we need to fix the antenna to actually get the picture. So we'll be coming back here in just a little bit. So make sure you turn the TV off before you go. And then pick up the fly swatter in the middle of the room. And then interact with this little blue book here on this table. And we're going to do a few things here. So first things first, this is where you will track all of the flowers that we need to collect. Obviously, we don't have any yet, so we don't have any pictures actually drawn in. But this is where you'll be able to see all of them. But on the front page, excuse me, the first page where it says number for the safe on the back wall behind that little portrait picture is a hidden safe that we need to unlock to get the gate key out of. So this is just telling us like, oh, it's a six digit number, yada, yada, yada. So we will be doing that for this little first part is the main goal to get the key. So from here. We're gonna go ahead and interact with the picture on the back wall. And this is just gonna reveal the safe. And again, we need six digits to actually open it up, but we don't have them yet. So go ahead and exit out of here. And then pick up the empty jar on the table just next to you. And we're gonna go right once into the kitchen. And we're gonna get our first button here. So pick up the button that's in the middle of the floor. And we're also gonna get our first trophy, which is of course, home sweet home. And we already had one button when we started. It's just going to be this collect them all one. And then, of course, home sweet home right here. And as I mentioned earlier, all of the trophies are associated with all of these buttons. So whether you're going for platinum or just the 452 points, you will be getting all of these. So from here, interact with the blue drawer in the back and we're going to get the scissors. And then pick up the kettle that's on the little stove here. And then pick up the magnet that's on the fridge. And then open up the fridge and we're gonna get that moldy strawberry. We're gonna be feeding it to an insect a little bit later on. And then on the table, pick up the stale bread. And then we're gonna go right one more time. And we're, this is gonna be referenced as the fireplace room because we're gonna be coming back here a few times. So if you hear me say fireplace room, it's the room with the fireplace, of course. So down on the bottom is gonna be this record player and go ahead and interact with it. And this will give you three out of the 36 records that we need to collect. Uh, you'll get these automatically. And this is where you can change the background music of the game. So whatever record you pick up, that's what you can change the music to. Um, I'm going to keep it on a mute right now while I'm recording this. You can change it to whatever you want. It's completely up to you. If you're out in the world and you want to change your uh, the background music, you can do that as well. On PlayStation, it's R1. I'm not sure what button that is on the other consoles. I do apologize. Um, but it's one of the right triggers. So um, yeah, so that's just the music for you. And now we need to have a little bit of a dance party here, but we need Fanny to join us. So go ahead and push in the left stick 
and we're going to switch to Fanny and head on inside the house and we're just going to go to that fireplace room. So just go right a couple of times. And then interact with the piano once you get there. And then the music will start to loosen a brick that is on the fireplace, which we will get a little game out of. So there's the brick falling down and then just interact with the hole. And this is going to get you the fire family game, which we are going to be playing here in just a few minutes. And before we do anything else here, we're going to go right one more time and then pick up the home simulation disc that's sitting in the middle of the floor. And again, this is a game that we are going to be playing here in just a few. And we can't really do anything else in here just yet, so we're going to go right one more time and pick up the binoculars that are on the table on the bottom. And then read the book that's just next to it. And just like the flower book, this is going to be where we track the bugs and the birds that we have collected and the ones that we still need. So once we find something, a picture will show up above the name. For now, we're just gonna go ahead and scroll over to the S's until we see the seagull. And underneath the seagull, you will see that it has a little music note with a sequence of numbers. This is a melody that we need to play once we unlock the seagulls up on the roof. And once we do that, it will unlock the fast travel system in the game, making the cleanup at the end much, much quicker. So go ahead and scroll through the rest of the book. We obviously don't have anything here, so I was just showing you what that little seagull melody is, and then pick up the magnifying glass just next to the book. And then we're gonna go left once, and then head on up the stairs. And here we're gonna read some books for some points as well as some collectibles. So go ahead and interact with the bookcase. And you do need to read all of the books on this front page to unlock the next two shelves that we have. Um, for the instruction manual, you can read through it if you want. There's no, like, points or anything on that one. And then pictures of bugs. It's just pictures of bugs. When you get to Secret Door, there is a clue in this one. If you scroll all the way to the last page, you will see a sequence of numbers here. We need to play this on a synthesizer, and it's going to unlock a secret door, as the book states. And we'll be doing that here just shortly. So underneath that book is going to be Disguised Digits. And if you just flip a couple of pages, we will get the second number required for the code to open up the safe in the living room. So that six digit number we need, the second number is going to be a one. And then on the next book, it's going to be reliable recipes. And this is just going to show you how to make the tea and what the tea bag is used for. And more importantly, the cupcake. So we do need to make a cupcake when, sorry, to clear one of the goblins once we get to the dark forest part of the game. So we will be making our little sweet treat here. And then the next book is going to be the custom costumes. And this just shows you how to make the ghost, the fox, and the alien costumes, all three of which we will be needing. And then this, of course, unlocks the next couple of shelves. So go ahead and hit more books. And don't worry, you don't have to read them all. We're not going to read them all. I'm just getting you guys some points as well as some of the clues for what we're going to be doing. So the first book on this page we're going to read is going to be Dinner with Your Ghost. And we're just going to flip a couple of pages until we reach a little cheat code for a game. So this is going to be the Infinite Lives cheat code for the Fire Family game, which of course is going to make that much easier to complete. And you can see right here, up, down, left, left, right, right. We'll put that on the main menu and then unlock that cheat code. So go ahead and finish up this book. And then the next one we're gonna read is gonna be Moby Dick. And just as a heads up, there are 135 chapters that you need to get through on this one. You do have to go through all of them. And then at the very end, you will get the Sea Captain costume in return. And go ahead and pause the video here because I am just going to skip forward to the end of the game so you're not just watching me flip through a bunch of pages for a couple of minutes. Okay, and once again, once we've reached the very end of the book, we will unlock the Sea Captain costume. You can't see it right now. Uh, I will show you once we get to the dresser, which we're about to do 
once we get into the closet from here. So we're not quite done with the bookcase just yet. We're gonna go ahead and go to more books and then go to the model menace. And this is gonna get us a record. And you can listen to it if you want. It's completely up to you. You don't have to. And then it did bump you out of the bookcase. Just interact with it again to go back inside. And then we're gonna go to more books. And now we're gonna go to the next page over and then read the hen that climbed a cow and never came down. Okay, and so this one is going to be more of hints for some uh, buttons as well as some trophies. So it tells us about the unicorn and how we need to feed it a spicy vegetable, which of course is going to be a pepper. The forest goblins, the floating spiders, like all of this we'll be interacting with. Um, so you can read through it if you want. It's completely up to you. I found it to be quite helpful, so I'm just showing you guys what that looked like. And then the next book we are going to read is going to be Champert and the Bear Party. And we're just going to scroll a couple of pages until we find another little cheat code. Okay, and this one is going to be for the Blizzard Beads game. And you can see it down on the bottom. It's going to be left, right, right, up, down, down. And this unlocks two-player mode for that mini game, which does make it easier after this one. We are going to go down. Let's see. To area is the most ideal person. And we're just going to scroll all the way to the end of the book. And here we just have a few clues on three of the mini games that we're gonna play. So when you beat Fire Family, you will unlock the ability to pet a bunny. Cool Cloud unlocks new places. And we need to beat Agile Auto before we can open up the fast travel system. So this is just a little hint and clue on regarding those. And then the next book we're gonna read is Things We Found on the Beach. And just scroll through until you reach the section with the goblins. And this just tells you what you need to do to beat the goblins or befriend them, which we'll be doing once we get to the dark forest. So for instance, the clover goblin wants a four leaf clover. So we do need to find one for him. Sleepy goblin, we're gonna be playing a melody to put it to sleep. Just little hints and clues about all of them. And like the sweet goblin, we need the cupcake for. So that's why we're making that. Um, so just read through those. If you want little hints and clues on them, this does get you a point towards your total. So. Make sure you exhaust through the entire book for that. And then the next book we're going to read is Happy Bones. And just scroll through all the way to the end. And this is going to unlock the skeleton costume. And then the next one we're going to read is Spider Moon and the Slime Dragon. So go ahead and open that up and scroll a few pages until you reach. Oh, I went a little too far. One second. <laughs> until you reach a synthesizer with a number sequence above it. Uh, obviously we will be playing this on the synthesizer here in a few minutes. Um, I'm going to reference this as the spider melody, just in case you hear me say that and you're like, the what? So this is where that is. So go ahead and exit out of that book. Okay. And from here, we just need to finish reading books to exhaust 10 minutes worth of real time minutes. So whatever we just spent looking at the books, subtract that from the 10 minutes, and then you just need to read books for that remaining time. So this is a trophy as well as a button. You can idle it, just make sure you are open on any page somewhere in any book. Um, it's completely up to you. You can read the books if you want. Some of them are quite uh, interesting to say the least, um, but I am gonna skip ahead. So if you need to pause the video here, go ahead and do so. And then I will meet you guys back up once the 10 minutes is done. Okay, and once that 10 minutes is up, go ahead and exit out of the bookcase and you are going to get your trophy as well as your in-game button for doing so. Again, it's just 10 real-time minutes that you need to be sitting in front of any book on the bookcase. So from here, we're going to go right once to the bedroom and go ahead and pick up the hat that's sitting in the middle of the floor here. And that's going to be another costume that's going to be added to your collection. And then pick up the sewing kit that's sitting on the back dresser. And then interact with the dresser. And this is just going to show you the costumes that you currently have. So the sneakers, we kind of started the game with them. You just kind of pick them up as you do some of the story related stuff. The hat we just picked up. The skeleton we got when we read the Happy Bones book. And then Sea Captain we got when we read the Moby Dick book. So just showing you these are what we have. Eventually we will unlock the ability to change those 
anywhere on the map and that'll of course be a little down the road but while we're in this closet there is a synthesizer here that we need to interact with excuse me and this is where we're going to play the secret door melody as well as the spider melody so just to show you how this works and this is how it's going to be for every musical instrument as well as the seagulls once we get there to play notes one two three and four we are going to move the right stick in the direction indicated under the number and then press l2 and then for five six seven eight we're going to do the same but press r2 so if i wanted to play a one right stick would go left l2 if i wanted to play an eight right stick would go up and then r2 so it can be a little funky and may take you a few tries to actually get it done but just go slow if you need to this isn't really a timed thing that we're doing so the first melody we're going to play is going to be the secret door melody and that's going to be three three seven six five six four one one eight seven five four six Okay, and once that is played correctly, it will reveal the secret door on the wall. So go ahead and go into that room. And then we're going to pick up the picture that's sitting in the middle of the floor here. And we are going to need this a little bit later on. And then interact with the fishbowl in the back. And this is where we're going to pick up the Adventure Brain game, which of course we are going to be playing in a few minutes along with all of the other ones. So from here, we're going to go back to the synthesizer and now we're going to play the spider melody. So go ahead and interact with it. And same as before with the L2 and R2. This one is going to be 881-265-813. And that, of course, will reveal a record on the ground. So go ahead and pick that up so it gets added to your collection. And now we're going to go ahead and exit out of the closet. And then interact with the bottom of Tux's bed, so the bed with the T on it, and make sure your indicator actually says look under the bed. Um, sometimes it will actually be like interact with the bed, you want to make sure you look under it. And here we're going to grab a basketball that we need for the alien costume a little bit later on. And then pick up the glue that's sitting on the table between the two beds. And then we're going to go right once into the bathroom and then pick up the lighter that's on this table down on the bottom and then we're going to use the lighter on the candle that is sitting just next to it and this is going to get us another number towards the safe in the living room so just go through all this little dialogue here and there we go we have the fifth number in that six number sequence and that's going to be a four so go ahead and make sure you blow out the candle before we go anywhere. Fanny will do it on her own a little later on, but just do it yourself here. And then just to the right is going to be some fish food. So go ahead and pick that up. And then interact with the mirror in the back. And when you open up the cabinet, you're going to get the coffee mug. And then interact with the mirror a second time. And now we're going to get the Tim Tooth mini game. And now we're going to go in the bottom right corner and there is a closet down here. So go inside and pick up the record that's sitting on the ground. And now we're going to go all the way back outside. So from the bathroom, just go all the way left until you go through the front door. Okay, once you're back outside, we're going to go right once to the mailbox and then interact with the mailbox to grab the bag of tea that's inside. And now we're going to pick up a couple of roof tiles that we need to fix the roof as well as do some collectible stuff. So to start, we're going to go up once and then pick up that blue roof tile that's sitting on the ground. And now we're going to go left once and then pick up the wormy apple that is sitting on the ground here and up in the tree is the bike pump that we need for the soccer ball so if you use your binoculars on the tree you can actually see it 
There we go, there's the bike pump, and we need the cat to knock this out of the tree for us, and that'll be a whole thing that we do just a little later on in the game. So just remember that this is here, we'll be coming back here. And now we're gonna go left twice, so go past the shed, and then you should reach a moon sign. So here's the moon sign. Go ahead and pick up that blue uh, roof tile that's sitting on the ground. And this is also where we're gonna be getting our first bird. We're gonna be getting the hermit thrush here. Now, when a bird is close by, you will see a little indicator to use your binoculars so that you can see it. So there's no indicator right now. So what we can do is just exit out of the screen and come back until it does show up. So exit, come back, and then just do this a few times. There we go. So now we have the indicator to use our binoculars. And when we do, we will see the bird in question. And looking at it through the binoculars does add it to your collection. And that, of course, will be your first bird. And now just to show you what the clovers look like, because again, we will be needing a four leaf clover for the clover goblin. These little green plants do appear randomly on each tile as you kind of shift through each screen. Uh, you need to collect 10 of these to get a four leaf clover. So you'll pick nine three leaf clovers and then the 10th one will be a four leaf. So since this is my first clover, it's gonna be a three leaf. So there we go. You can work on this as you go if you want. Um, otherwise there will be a point where I'm just like, okay, we need to get the clovers done. Let's do it now if you haven't done it. So I'll make sure you don't miss any of this and make sure you have it when we actually need it. So just showing you what that looks like. And then from here, we're gonna go down once, and then we're gonna go right once, and go ahead and pick up that roof tile. And this is the last one we need for the roof, but before we get that, interact with this patch of grass here. And this is gonna get us our first cloud. We do have to see nine different clouds throughout the game, and doing all nine will get us a bag of flour that we need for the cupcake. So again, we need a cupcake for the sweet goblin, this is just working on that. So there's our little duck cloud. And before we go any further, we do have another bird here. We're gonna get the morning dove. So we're gonna exit out and come back a few times until the binoculars show up. So let's do this a couple of times. All right, there we go. And there's our morning dove. And now we're gonna go right once, so we're back at the house. And now we're gonna go up and around the house so that we reach the patio. So this little hidden area just in the back. And go ahead and pick up the shovel. And then pick up the game that's sitting on the table right here, and this is gonna be the Skull Legs video game. And now we do need Tux to join us because we're going to get a butterfly for our insect collection here. So hit the left stick and then switch to Tux and then make your way outside. And then again, we're just going to go up and around the house so that we reach the patio and then interact with the chairs so both Tux and Fanny sit down. And then a butterfly will fly by and this will be added to our collection. Okay, and just to make sure, you should still be controlling Tux right now. There's nothing in the cellar that we need. You can go look in it if you want. There's nothing that even gets you points down there so you can just kind of skip it. And from here, we're going to go back inside the house. And we're going to go right to the kitchen. And now we're going to make some tea. So first, you're going to use the kettle on the sink to fill it up with water. And then go ahead and put that kettle on the stove. And then use either the mug or the bag of tea on the kettle. It doesn't matter which one, they both will work. And then you're just gonna drop the tea bag in the tea and hold it there for about, about a minute, minute and a half or so. Okay, and so once the tea is done, it'll be added to your inventory. And from here, we're gonna go right once to the fireplace room. 
And we're gonna use the fish food that we just picked up on the fish bowl in the back. And this is gonna get us another number for the safe in the living room. So the fourth number in that six number sequence is gonna be a three. And then from here, we're gonna go right one more time and then head on up the stairs and then go up the ladder that's just next to the bookcase and then interact with the antenna and then doing it once should fix the TV, but we're gonna find out here in just a second. As you can see, he is saying he needs Fanny's help to check the TV and you will automatically switch to Fanny. So once you are her, go ahead and go inside and then interact with the TV. And if you don't get a clear picture here, just switch back to Tux and interact with the antenna again. Otherwise, once you have your clear picture, go ahead and flip to channel nine. And there we have another number for that six digit code. We need to unlock the safe in the living room. So the first number of that code is gonna be a five. So go ahead and exit out of this room and we're gonna go right. Uh, once you try to leave, she is going to turn the TV off, so just a heads up. If you couldn't do it yourself, she'll do it there. Um, but we're going to go right to the fireplace room. And then once you're here, use the lighter on the fireplace to ignite it. And then switch to Tux, who should still be on the roof. And then surrounding the chimney are these holes. You can kind of see the dark blue spots here. This is what we're gonna use the roof tiles on. So put all three roof tiles on the holes. And this will allow us to access the chimney here. And now we need to collect the smoke so that we can remove that hornet's nest that is sitting just outside the shed. So use the empty jar on the smoke and then we'll get a jar of smoke. And now we're gonna switch back to Fanny and then go ahead and exit the house. Of course you will put out the fire before you go, but once you do exit all the way left. And now we're gonna go left once and then up once to the shed. And now we're gonna use that jar of smoke on the hornet's nest here to clear them out. And when you do this, it does add the hornet to your collection. So don't worry about missing this bug if you do this before actually interacting with them. So you won't miss it. And then once the hornets are gone, you gain access to the shed. So go ahead and head on inside and then pick up the record that's sitting on the floor just next to you. and then pick up the ax that's sitting in the back of the room and then pick up the hammer that's sitting on the workbench and then just so you can see it go ahead and interact with the poster in the back of the room and this is just going to show you what we need to actually fix the soccer ball because again that's our main goal of this whole game is to play soccer so we know the pump is up in the tree we need to find a needle and of course we do have the soccer ball so that's just an FYI reference for you. Uh, this workbench is where we're going to be crafting uh, most of the, well, all of the items <laughs> that we need to use to access certain areas and then complete certain tasks. So we'll be coming back here twice to do that. Uh, ignore this video camera for now. This is where we're going to be making our home videos that we need to sell in the store. And that came off so much more. Okay, I didn't mean for that to come off the way it did, but we will be making videos here to sell in the store for money so that we can get some collectibles. Okay, moving on. So from here, we're going to switch back to Tux, who should still be sitting up on the roof. And now we're just going to go back inside the house. And now we're going to go down the stairs. And here we're going to start playing all the video games that we've collected up to this point. So interact with the computer. And the first game we're gonna play is gonna be the home simulation game. So it's gonna be this HS folder on the desktop. So go ahead and select it. And here you're just gonna move each character you play over to the right until you can interact with the computer. So this one's gonna be two screens, but mostly they're gonna be either two or three. You're not gonna go super far away.
eventually the game will break and show this little distorted screen here and then it will actually error out and give you another digit that we need to open the safe in the living room so the third number of that code is going to be a seven and we do have five out of the six numbers now so we can kind of just use process of elimination to open up the safe and that's exactly what we're gonna do here. So go ahead and exit out of the computer and then we're gonna go left back to the living room. And then interact with the safe on the back wall. And again, we have the first five numbers, we're just missing the sixth. So that code is gonna be five, one, seven, three, four. And again, we're just missing the last digit here and you can cycle through all the numbers if you want to try to figure it out yourself. Otherwise, that last number is going to be an eight. So go ahead and open up the safe and then grab the gate key that's sitting inside. Now we're going to head back to the computer. And then interact with it. And now we're gonna play the fire family game. And if you remember, we did find a cheat code for this one a little bit earlier, which is gonna give us the infinite lives. And that code of course is up, down, left, left, right, right. And you should hear a little jingle that plays letting you know that the code is successful and you can now just willy nilly your way through this. So for fire family, what you're gonna be doing is you're gonna be little baby fire and you need to rescue all of your family members. So the difficulty comes from when you hit the brown spots here or the brown blocks, they will catch fire and they will eventually disappear. So you do kind of need to be careful with where you're stepping and kind of time it. Eventually water drops will start to fall down in the more difficult levels and you need to, sorry, you need to avoid those as well. So you do need to play through easy, medium and hard to beat the game and get the trophy as well as that button. So I am gonna play through it just in case you get stuck on any levels, but I'm not gonna talk through it any more than I already have. And I'll meet back up with you guys once everything pops.
Okay, and once you beat the game, you're going to get your trophy as well as the button associated with this one. So go ahead and exit back to the desktop. And now we're going to play the Adventure Brain game, which, of course, because it was found in a fish tank, is going to be incredibly broken. That's usually what happens when a game gets water damage. But you're just going to scroll through each of these little sequences here until you reach the main menu again. And then it's going to give you the trophy. So it'll take about a minute or so to get through everything. And then, yeah, we can just move on from there. Okay, and there we go. There's our trophy, and we of course also get the button associated with this one. So go ahead and exit back to the desktop, and now we're going to play the Tim Tooth game. And just as a heads up, this game is incredibly luck-based. No matter how good you are at match three games, this one can take you anywhere between five minutes and over an hour, so just be prepared a little bit. The main gist is just like any other match game, you want to match three like tiles. They can be horizontal, vertical, L-shaped, whatever, so long as all three are touching in some way, shape, or form. And you want to match them when they're next to a food icon. So the food will disappear as long as it is touching a match. And then once it disappears, you'll get points as well as an additional move. So just to show you, hopefully I can get a little lucky and get one right on the start here so i'm just going to open up classic mode and let's see okay yeah so we can get this little ice cream down here on the bottom we're going to match these four reds right here and because they're touching the ice cream the ice cream will disappear and we'll get some points so the brushes left is how many moves you have again removing food gives you additional moves to actually use obviously and the goal is to beat the high score. So that's 75,057, that's the score we're aiming to beat. So just keep going at it as best you can. Again, it is kind of luck based since not every game can be won, basically. Um, and then I'm going to skip through this because I already know it's going to take me a while. It's taken me a while each time I've done this. And then I'll meet back up with you guys once we get to the end of it. Okay, so once you beat that high score, you can either just exit out or just finish it off to see how high of a score you can actually get. It's completely up to you. But once you exit out of the game, you will actually get the trophy as well as the button. So let's go ahead and finish this up super quick right here. And then of course we did get game over, but we beat the high score. So there's our trophy and we do get a button as well. Now the next part is gonna be optional. If you are going for full game, Sorry, full point completion, you do need to do this next part. If you're purely going for trophies and achievements, you do not. So you do need to play the game a second time, but this time on speed mode. And it's just basically timed. You have two minutes to get as high of a score as you can. You don't really need to play it. You can just kind of idle it. Just make sure you score at least one point so you have something on the board. And then you can just idle it until the time runs out. And again, this just gets you an additional point towards the actual score, so that 452 points. Okay, so once again, once the time runs out, this will just be an additional point towards your score. No trophy, no button, just something extra that you can do. And then once you're done, go ahead and exit back to the desktop. Okay, and the last game we have is Skull Legs, and this one we can't play alone because it's a little too scary for Tux and Fanny, so they do need to be in the same room to get this. So we do need to grab Fanny. So go ahead and exit out of the computer and this is just where you'll get all the buttons that we've been collecting as we've been playing so again there's the fire family adventure brain and tim tooth so exit out of the computer and then switch to fanny who should still be up in the shed and before we go back into the house we're just going to stop by the mailbox really quick so we're going to go right once and then right a second time 
and then down once to the mailbox. In here we have a bag of sugar that we can pick up and this was our reward for completing the Tim Tooth minigame. So just go ahead and grab that really quick. And now we're gonna go left and then inside the house. And then go all the way right to the computer room. And then interact with the computer. Hux might be in the way, so you might need to switch him. Let's see. Yeah, I do need to switch. Okay. Do -do -do -do. All right, so interact with the computer. And now we can play Skull Egg since both are in the room. All right, so for this game, if you haven't guessed it, you are gonna be playing a skull with legs. And the main gist of the game is to just interact with or run into your target. So for the first couple of levels, you're gonna be looking to scare the children. So you're gonna go after the little children head that's running around. And then on the final level, you will be going after the devil. So within that, there's gonna be some enemies that you need to avoid. It's pretty easy. You're not gonna get more than two on the screen at one time. So just be careful. If you do get game over, that's fine. When you start the game back up, you'll start where you left off. So if you got game over on level two, you'll start back on level two. If you got game over on level four, you'll start back on level four. So it's pretty forgiving in that sense. But just get through all of the levels and then we'll get our trophy and button and all that good stuff. Okay, and once you beat the game, you will get the Skull Lakes trophy as well as the in-game button. So go ahead and exit out of the computer, and there's your little button. And we also got a soundtrack as a reward for this one, and it's out by the mailbox. So go ahead and exit that house. And then we're gonna go right once to the mailbox. And then there's our record just sitting on the ground next to it. So go ahead and pick that up to collect it. And then we're gonna open up this gate here with the gate key we got from the safe in the living room. So just go ahead and open that up. And this opens up the map quite a deal for us. But before we go any further, we're gonna go ahead and just double check our stats to make sure everybody's on the same page. So if you hit touchpad, if you're playing on PlayStation, Again, I'm not sure what the buttons are for the other consoles. I do apologize, but you can bring up this collection menu and you just want to make sure yours matches what mine is showing right now. So score wise, you should have 84 points. Buttons, you should have seven. Birds and bugs are four. Clouds are one. Records, eight. Five disc, four costumes. So just make sure yours matches here. If it doesn't, you will need to go back and kind of figure out what you've missed so far. Otherwise, we can continue forward with the story. All right, so from here, we're going to go right once. And you should come to this bush over here that's kind of spazzing out a little bit. This is going to be the first of four glitches that we need to interact with to unlock the glitch costume. So if you just go ahead and interact with the bush, the game will kind of get all crazy and wonky. Um, here you just need to interact with the bush on the bottom and to do so you can walk on the border and then make your way across the water and then once you interact with the bush everything will turn back to normal. And before we go any further there is another bird here. We're going to catch the elder flycatcher so go ahead and exit out and come back if the bird is not visible right away. All right, and there we go, and there's our bird. 
And now we're going to go up once and then interact with this note on the ground right here. And this is going to give us a melody that we are going to need to play on our thumb piano. And this is what we're going to use to actually bring the bunny out of its hole so that we can pet it. So we'll be using this a little later on in the game. But for now, go ahead and go up once. And then we're going to use the shovel on this clay here. And this is going to allow us to make our claymation video in the shed with the video camera once we get ready to make all of those. And we do need this to get some money from the shop as well. So once you have that, we're just going to go right once. And we're going to use the axe that we picked up in the shed on this tree to chop it down. And this is going to create a bridge for us to cross. And then go ahead and cross that bridge and go right once and then interact with this flower so that we can add it to our collection and of course there's another patch of grass here so go ahead and interact with that to get the next cloud and this should be the pirate ship and there's also a bird in this area as well so again if it's not visible right away just go ahead and exit and come back a couple of times and there we go there's our little owl and now we're gonna go up once and then interact with the turtle that's sitting on the ground and inside you're gonna find an ant And then once you exit out of the turtle, there is going to be a disc on the ground here. This is the ant acquisition game that we are going to be playing. So go ahead and exit out of that for now. And then we're going to use the axe on the tree up here to create another bridge. And then cross over that bridge and go left once and then interact with the flower to add it to your collection. And then pick up the stick that's on the ground over here. And then up north is gonna be the snowy mountain that we can't quite reach just yet, but once we get the seagulls, we will be able to access that area. So for now, we're just gonna go left once. And then interact with the rock, and this is gonna add the fleas to our collection. And you will automatically switch to the fleas, but go ahead and ignore this for now. We'll do this once we start working on the cat. So switch back to Fanny. And now we're going to go left one more time. And then interact with the patch of grass to get the next cloud. And this is going to be the record. And then once you exit out of the cloud, the record will actually appear on the ground. So go ahead and pick that up to add it to your collection. And then we're going to go left once and then pick up that mysterious key sitting on the ground and then interact with the flowers to add them to your collection. And then we're going to go left again. And there is a bird we need to collect here. So if you can't use your binoculars right away, again, just exit and come back a few times until you can. And this is going to be the yellow rumped warbler that we're collecting. So once you have that, go ahead and go left and then interact with the rock. And this is going to get us the cricket. And we also have a bird in this area, which is the white crowned sparrow. So again, if you can't use your binoculars right away, just exit and come back a few times until you can use it and see the bird. And then use your scissors on the vine on the bottom to remove those. And now we're going to go down once and then interact with this tree right here to see that there's a nest that has a paper clip inside of it and we need to get that down. So to do so, use the magnet on the tree and that somehow magically is strong enough to pull that paper clip down and that will be added to your inventory. And from here, go ahead and interact with the uh, little patch of grass here to get the next cloud. And this is going to be the shark cloud.
And finally, we do have a bird in this area. So again, if you can't use your binoculars, just exit the area and come back a couple of times until you can. And this is gonna be the Daredevil Dome Owl. And then we're gonna go right once and then interact with the flower to add it to your collection. And then interact with the rock and this is gonna get you another bug. And we do have a bird in this area as well. We're looking for the northern flicker. So just keep exiting and coming back until you can use your binoculars. There we go. And then be sure to look at the bird to make sure it gets added. And now we're gonna go right once. And here you should have some ducks sitting right in front of you, one of which is kind of flashing and moving a little awkwardly. Uh, this is the second glitch that we need to interact with for that costume. So go ahead and just interact with him and then you will eventually become the duck. <laughs> And when you are, just interact with the other ducks so that you keep multiplying. It might be a specific one that you have to touch, just a heads up. And then once you can't duplicate no more, you will turn back to normal and the second glitch will be done. So from here, go ahead and interact with the lily pads. Then you're gonna collect the water lilies in your flower collections. And then with the other duck, you're gonna use the stale bread to feed it. So remember, we picked this up in the kitchen on the table. And then once it stands up, you will see some fishing line around its foot. And now we're gonna use the scissors to cut that loose. And we'll be needing this to make our fishing pole so that we can complete some side stuff a little later on. So from here, we're gonna go right once. And then interact with the patch of grass. And this is gonna get us our next cloud. And this is, of course, the crocodile. And then interact with the rock, and we're going to get another bug. This time it's going to be the earwig. And then there is a bird here. It's going to be the robin. So again, if you can't use your binoculars, just go ahead and go back and forth a couple of times. And there we go. There's our robin. And now we're gonna go right three times. So we're gonna end up back at that elephant flower that we looked at and that patch of grass. So go across the wooden bridge when you get there and then right once from there. So here we are back in the area with the elephant flower and then of course the patch of grass. And now we're gonna go down once and you should arrive at a car. And you're gonna use the hammer on the car to break the window open. And remember the hammer we picked up in the shed along with the axe and there was a record in there as well. So it's gonna take, I think, six hits to actually break. Here we go. And then you're automatically gonna pick up the box of nails as well as the Agile Auto video game that we are gonna be playing. And there is a trunk, but we need a key to open it, which we are gonna pick up here in just a few. So from here, we're gonna go down once. And we're gonna interact with the flower and this is gonna be the panda blossom. And then interact with the skull and we're going to get the maggot added to our little bug collection and that also unlocked a video game so pick up the disc and this is going to get the maggot mayhem video game which is disgusting to say the least as would be expected from a maggot game but from this go ahead and pick up the fox fur that's sitting just next to the skull And then we're gonna go down once and then interact with the patch of grass and this is gonna get us the turtle cloud okay and now there are two things we can see in the binoculars on this part there is a bird that we need to get but there's also the train that we need to get so once again you're just gonna keep exiting and coming back There we go. Okay, so that time we got the train. This is just an additional point that you can get if you're going for all 452, but we do need the bird as well. So again, just keep going back and coming, sorry, leaving and coming back until you get the red bird. So this is gonna be the red Tremendous that will be added to our collection. 
And from here, we're going to go down once and interact with this water bowl. Of, excuse me, water bowl over here. And we're going to fill this up with water, obviously. And this is going to be for the cat sequence that we're going to do once we start working on getting into the yard so they can get up the tree. So go ahead and interact with the sunflower to add it to your flower collection. And then we're going to go left once. And then interact with this rock and we're going to get the tick and then pick up the long stick that's on the ground and then go left once and then just make your way to the rock with this snail on it and this is where we're going to use our moldy strawberry that we picked up in the kitchen so go ahead and use the strawberry on the rock itself and the snail will move to reveal the car key that we need to use to open up the car trunk. So once it's out of the way, go ahead and pick that up. All right, and now we're gonna go left once. And I know there's flowers right there. We're gonna come back and get those in just a second. So uh, go, sorry, go left once and then interact with the patch of grass. And this is gonna get us the computer cloud and watching this cloud also gets us the cool cloud video game. So once you exit out of here, the disc will appear on the ground. So go ahead and pick that up. And then use your ax on the tree to form a bridge. And this is actually gonna be for Tux to use more so than us right now. Okay, so with the bridge there, go ahead and go right once back to where the snail was. And now we can interact with those flowers to add the buttercups to our little flower collection. And now we're going to switch to Tux. So go ahead and exit the house. And then we're going to go right twice. Oh, excuse me, we're gonna go right once to the mailbox, then out the fence, and then just all the way down to that bridge we just made. So we're gonna go past the frog, and then cross the bridge, and then right once. And then interact with the buttercup flowers with Fanny standing right there. And we're gonna test the buttercups, which is gonna cause a stick of butter to appear in the fridge. So just go through this little mini little scene here. And there we have our stick of butter. And this is gonna be used to make the cupcake that we need for the sweet gob. And then from here, we're gonna go right once and then up once and you should come to a horse. Just go ahead and stand next to it and then switch to Fanny because we need both characters here. So again, that's gonna be right once and then up once. And then use the wormy apple on the horse to distract it. And then as Tux, you're going to use the scissors on the tail to get the horse hair. So just go ahead and cut the tail off. And we're going to use this to create our paintbrush here in just a few. And then once you do this, we are going to play the first version of Wiggle Worm, which you are essentially just a worm making your way through the digestive tract of a horse. So yeah, just to make your way through the tunnel. It's pretty linear there. You can't really get lost or stuck or anything. And you will come out the, uh, uh, the other end. Yeah. Uh, if you catch my drift with that. Okay, and once you exit the horse, you will add the worm to your inventory, and we're going to use this to go fishing. But for now, we are going to do some other stuff. So you should still be controlling Tux right now. Go ahead and switch if you are not. Um, once you are, go up once. 
and then interact with the rock and you're going to add another bug to your collection. And then we're going to use the photograph we picked up in that secret room on this statue here. And it's basically we need to prove that we're friends or we have friends to unlock this area. So once the statue moves, go ahead and go downstairs and then pick up the record that's just at the bottom of the stairs. And then go right once and then pick up the beach ball. And then interact with the vending machine and inside is a gas mask that we need for the smelly goblin but it's going to cost us 10 cents to get and we're going to go get the money now with fanny so go ahead and exit out of here and then switch to fanny and then before we do that we are going to go up once and then left once and then interact with the bush to make sure that this flower does get added to your collection. The glitched bush does not count for that. So you wanna make sure that you do actually get this one. So from here, we're gonna go down once and then interact with the rock to get another bug added to your collection. And then interact with the wood to pick it up. And then we're gonna go down and then left across the bridge and then don't go left once more instead we're just going to go straight up from here and then through the fence and back into the house so just go left through the fence and then left once more to get inside the house Okay, so in uh, most of the rooms, there is going to be one coin that you need to find, so a total of 10 inside. In the living room, the coin is going to be on the couch. And then go right into the kitchen. And the coin is going to be in the blue drawer where we picked up the scissors. And then right into the fireplace room, and it's going to be under this pink rug right here. And then right once more to the computer room. And this one is going to be in the plant. And then go on upstairs. And just by the bookcase, the next coin is going to be under the chair. And then we're going to head into the bedroom. And this one's going to be by the lamp on the table between the two beds. And then go down into the closet. And this one's going to be in the plant. And then go left into the secret room. And then this one is going to be in the fish tank. And then we're going to go back to the bedroom. So exit the secret room, exit the closet. And then we're going to go right into the bathroom. And then this one is going to be on the plant as well. And the last one is going to be up on the rooftop. So go left and then left once more back to the bookcase and then up the ladder. And then the coin is just down by the antenna. And then before we go back to Tux, we're going to go ahead and go down back to the bookcase. And just to the right is going to be this blue statue right here. Go ahead and use the paper clip on that statue. And this is going to give us the battery to the camera that's in the shed. So now we can start making our weird little home movies of sorts. So from here, we're going to go ahead and switch back to Tux. And then we're going to use those coins on the vending machine so we can get the mask. And then interact with this newly seen red bug that's crawling on the wall here and it'll add the ladybug to your collection. And because that was your 11th bug, we are getting the insect trophy, which we'll be selling here just a little later on because we do need the money from it. So once you have that, go ahead and exit this little bunker. And then we're gonna go up once and interact with the patch of grass to get the next cloud and this one is going to be the clown patch. 
and then interact with the tractor. And this is going to get us the puzzle tractor video game, which we are going to be playing. Of course, we're going to be playing all of these, but I'm probably going to keep saying that. So once you have that, we're going to go left once and then interact with the boots on the ground. And then use that tea bag that we had from earlier on the boots. And then from here, we're going to go right twice. So we're going to go back to the car, basically. And then we're going to use the car key on the trunk to open it up. And inside is a briefcase, and this basically allows us to change our costume at any point in the game, which will come in handy once we start getting through the dark forest. We'll be having to do that quite a few times, so this is just in preparation for that. So from here, we can go ahead and finish up the first day. So we're going to switch back to Fanny. And then she should still be by the bookcase here. So just go right once into the bedroom. And then just stand by her bed, which is the one with the F on it, of course. And we're going to drink the tea that we made earlier, which is going to make us nice and sleepy. And then we're going to interact with the bed to actually go to sleep. So interact with the bed and then we'll try to go to sleep, but unfortunately there is an annoying bird in the tree that is preventing us from doing so. So uh, this is the first point where you will take control of the cat. So once you do, go ahead and interact with the tree at the top of this screen right here and you will climb up it and then make your way through the branches all the way to the bird to silence it. And this will drop a red feather on the ground and this is actually going to be the first cat clue that we're going to pick up to pretty much allow the cat to come into the yard and get the bike pump for us so we'll be coming back to that just a little bit later on first we need to get through a pretty strange little dream sequence here so for this one once you gain control of your little piece we're just going to go to the right And then once you reach the chicken, I'm assuming that's chicken, we're going to go up once. And then just keep spamming cross. And this is just going to go through a whole bunch of dialogue. And then at the very end, we're actually going to get the last digit we needed for the safe in the living room. But because we didn't need it, we already have it open. But this is where you would get that number if you weren't going for the process of elimination little method. So go ahead and exit out of here walk over to yourself and then wake yourself up all right and now we are on day two but before we go any further we're just going to do a quick little check to make sure we're all on the same page okay and this is where an error on my part is going to come into play and I do apologize for that there was an owl that I showed you guys the location of but when I interacted with the owl I just backed out of the screen instead of finishing the dialogue so it didn't give me credit for it and I didn't realize that until much further in the game and I actually had to go back and get it. So for that reason, your score and your birds and your bugs might be different from mine. So your score will either be 173 or 174. You should have seven buttons. If you've collected everything as it should have been collected, you will have 23 birds and bugs, not 22 like it's shown on my screen. Nine flowers, eight clouds, no cat clues just yet because we're still setting those up. Ten records, ten discs, and four costumes. So just make sure that yours matches kind of what is showing on the screen. I'm going to put little things up there so that you guys know what you should actually have. And then uh, once you're ready to go, we can move forward. Okay, so this next part is where we'll be doing the majority of the collectibles and that sort of stuff and kind of prepping for the dark forest to make sure we have everything for the goblins. So we're going to leave Fanny in the bedroom just for now and we're going to switch over to Tux and he should still be sitting by that car that we found. So we're just going to go all the way left and down and cross over that bridge that we've been using the past couple of times Fanny was with us. So again, that's just going to be all the way down and then all the way left. And 
And then once you cross the bridge, we're gonna go left one more time. And there is gonna be a tree on fire here. You just need to use the ax on it to chop it down. And this of course will create a bridge. I believe this is the first one you're actually supposed to do in the game because the other ones don't really explain what's going on or any of that stuff. But before we cross over, we are gonna interact with the daffodil here to add it to our collection. And this is where we'll get the bunny once we have everything for it. We still need to get our thumb piano so that we can play a little melody to actually bring it out. So for now, we are gonna go down once. And then go ahead and pick up the record that's sitting on the ground. And then we're gonna use that mysterious key that we picked up earlier on the chest. And then grab the carrot that's inside. And of course, this will be for the rabbit as well. We just can't use it just yet. So go ahead and cross back over the bridge. And we're gonna go left once. And then interact with that patch of grass. And this is gonna get us our last cloud that we need, which is gonna be the trumpet. And again, because we've seen all nine clouds, we will now get a bag of flour that we need to make the cupcake. So there's our bag of flour. And now we're gonna interact with the stones down here on the bottom. And this is just gonna be a stone skipping little game that we're playing. And you need to stop the yellow bar when it's in the red rectangle here. So you gotta do this 20 times. It does eventually start to get faster and the rectangle does of course get smaller. You are allowed to bounce it off as many walls as you need to until you're comfortable to actually hit it. It shouldn't be too terribly difficult though, so you shouldn't need too many bounces. But once you hit 20, the mini game will end and then we will knock a record off of a rock, which we will go and pick up. Okay, and there's our record. So go ahead and oh, exit out of the rocks and then we're gonna go left once. And then there's the record on the ground. So go ahead and pick that up. And when you do, you will automatically get the Sleepy Goblin Melody as well as the record added to your collection. And we do need the thumb piano to play this one. So we're gonna just keep this in our memory for now and then bring it out once we need it. So go ahead and exit out of here. And now we're going to use the scissors on the vines on this log to open up this little pathway here. And then go inside the log. And we're going to go right once. And then interact with this box here on the roof. And this is just by the house, but we do need to grab that box because it has the markers in it. So that just opens up that. And then we're going to go right one more time and then interact with these roots. And in the computer room, our yoga mat had a big root sticking out of it, so that removes that. And then we're gonna go right again, and then go ahead and pick up the disc, and this is gonna be for the internet. Then we're gonna go right one more time, and then pick up the record that's in the middle of the path, and then also interact with the arrow. All right, so go ahead and exit out of this tunnel. And then we're going to go up once and then interact with the rock to get another bug added to our collection. And then go right once and then pick up that record that's sitting in the middle of the floor here. And just to show you that box that's on the other side of the fence, that's the one that we just pushed out of the ground. So we will be collecting that here in just a few. But for now, we're gonna go right one more time. And we have our third glitch that we need to interact with. So clearly I am Tux, but there's also a Tux in this mud puddle here. Go ahead and interact with it and you will become duplicated. 
Once you do, just go over and touch the other tucks to end it. And that fixes that glitch right there. So there is a bird here as well before we go any further. Again, if your binoculars aren't showing, just exit and then come back until they are. There we go. And this is going to be your raven. And then we're going to go right once. And then up once. And then left through the fence and then left back to the house and as you can see our house is quite glitched now and this is going to be the final thing we need to interact with to unlock the glitch costume so go ahead and enter the house and we're going to make our way back to the secret room so we'll just go all the way right until we reach the computer room and then we're going to go upstairs and then right into the bedroom and then down into the closet and then left into the secret room and then just interact with this little being here so for this one I haven't quite been able to figure out what exactly I'm supposed to be doing here but I found that going through each of the four screens so up down left and right does cause it to end a little quicker uh, sometimes it does sometimes it doesn't I don't know it's weird it's weird <laughs> it's, it's a little strange so just keep going through each of the screens until it allows you to free sorry, move freely in this area and then just exit out of the little break room and then interact with the console over on the bottom left and you're just going to remove the slime that is on the console and then just wait for the clones to kind of attack you on the screen and that will end this little sequence here Okay, and once you're outside of the house, go ahead and go down once and then interact with the rock and this is going to get the ants added to your little collection. And then we're going to go left once and then interact with that box to pick up the magic markers. And then interact with the flower to add the dandelion to your collection. And just as a heads up, this does add yellow dandelions all over the map that you will see pop up. You don't have to interact with them. They're just going to be much more abundant now. But this does also add the flower trophy to your collection, which of course we will be selling once we get to that point because we need the money. So go ahead and exit out of this. And from here, we're going to go ahead and switch back to Fanny, who should still be in the little bedroom here. And there's these papers on the ground here that we've been kind of ignoring and just passing over. Go ahead and use the magic markers on these papers to start a little mini game. And here we just need to walk across the page to reveal some drawings. So just keep going through all of them. And then the last one we need is for the internet password. So it's going to be about three, three or four that you need to get through. Okay, and again, the final picture that you're going to draw is going to be the internet password. This is going to be the same for everybody. It's not random. So to access the internet, we need the 3685. That is going to be our passcode. So once you're done there, go ahead and exit out of the papers there. And we're going to head downstairs. So go past the bookcase and you're going to pretty much end up in the computer room. Before we use the computer, we are going to do a few different things here. So the first thing is going to be interacting with the yoga mat. So we do a little bit of meditation.
and through the power of meditation, we have managed to manifest a fish hook to appear. And that fish hook is going to be just behind the plant here. So make sure you pick that up before going forward. And now we're going to get one of the games, at least, kind of, <laughs> out of the way. So interact with the computer. And we're going to play Cool Cloud. And for this game, you just need to use your cloud to do kind of like unwritten quests here. So for the farm, you want to water the crops so they grow. The second level is going to be a swimming pool that you need to fill, like little stuff like that. It'll be kind of obvious what you need to do with each of them. And then once you get to the final level, the power will go out. So I'll meet you guys when we get to that point. Okay, and again, when you reach the last level, you will have to rain on the house, which will actually cause a storm to happen outside, and the power will go out. So we do need to do a couple of things while we're here. So first, we're going to go upstairs, and a book has fallen off the bookshelf. Go ahead and pick that up. And then we're going to go right all the way to the bathroom. And then we're going to switch to Tux, who should now be inside the house because it's storming outside and he came in on his own. But we're going to go to the bathroom as well. So just go right to the computer room and then we're going to go upstairs. And then right into the bedroom and then to the bathroom. And now we're going to use the lighter on the candle. And now we're just going to read that book together to kind of wait out the storm here. And this will unlock the raincoat costume that we need for the unicorn as well as a few other things in the story. So just exhaust all the dialogue here. So just to make sure you should be controlling Tux right now. So go ahead and exit out of the bathroom and we're going to make our way downstairs back to the computer room. And you may not have noticed, but we did not get our trophy or button for the Cool Cloud game, and that's because we haven't technically finished it yet. So go ahead and open up the computer, and then open up Cool Cloud. And we now have a rainbow level that we need to play, which is basically just the credits. So as soon as you open that up, you will get your trophy as well as your button. So go ahead and exit back to the desktop. And now we're going to play Agile Auto. And for this one, you are going to be playing a half car half man kind of thing and you just need to avoid the bird poop that's falling that's pretty much it nothing super spectacular about it but you need to survive for two minutes and one second without getting hit and that'll finish up the game okay 
Okay, and as soon as you hit that two minute, one second mark, you can go ahead and end the game and get your game over. And that, of course, will unlock the trophy as well as the button. So exit back to the desktop. And now we're going to play Ant Acquisitions. And this one, you are going to be playing ants that need to retrieve food back to the ant hill. So you'll start off as one, and then you need to go and find your little friends to collect. And these are going to help you actually bring the food back. So let's see if we can get another one really quick. All right, so let's try these. So when you press on a piece of food, if it makes like a little jingle clicking sound, that means that it can be picked up with the ants that you currently have. If you get like a little error sound, uh, kind of like this, it's basically telling you that you can't pick that up yet and you need more ants. So you get ants by collecting them around the little play area here as well as bringing food back. So just keep going through all of it until you clear the table. The last one you're gonna be clearing is the large chicken dinner that's on a platter. It's over on the left side here. Um, but once you get that one, the game, the game will end.
All right, and once the chicken dinner has been returned to the anthill, you will get your trophy as well as the in-game button for this one. And then once it's done, you can go ahead and exit back to the desktop. So let's wait for it to finish up just a little bit more. There we go, there's our trophy. So exit back to the desktop. And now we are gonna play Maggot Mayhem, which is again, rather a disgusting game, but a game nonetheless. So on this one, you need to get through all five animals by feeding the magnets to the corpses of them. So when your maggots are green, they are well fed. When they start to turn red or are very much red, that means they are starving and they're not getting enough to eat. So you need to just move them around to make sure that the food is evenly distributed as best as possible. So this first one is going to be a little mouse. So we're just going to move these guys over just a little bit. Make sure everybody gets a piece. And then the corpse will eventually start to get smaller and smaller. So you'll need to keep an eye on the maggots as best you can. Okay, so there we go, it's starting to shrink a little bit. And again, you just wanna make sure that all of the maggots are kind of like evenly distributed so everybody gets a little bit of a piece. Right, and then the final little bit is going to be a little bit harder to control, but that's okay. It shouldn't take too long for it to actually deplete and disappear. So again, just focus on getting the red ones down into the grub. Here we go. Once it's done, the next animal will unlock, which of course is a rabbit. And again, you just want to try to evenly distribute all the maggots so that they get their own little piece of the pie and aren't really fighting over it too much. And then again, you just want to wait for it to deplete and disappear and all your maggots to be happily well fed.
Okay, so once the final one is done, you of course will get your trophy as well as the button. So go ahead and exit back to the desktop and now we're going to play Puzzle Tractor. And for this one, you need to move the tractor to collect the hay in the amount of moves given you. So your gas is the amount of moves you have and then the wheat is how much grain you need to pick up as you go through this. So for the first level to collect it all, we're going to go right and then down and then left, down, right, down, left, and then up. And then for level two, we're going to go up, left, down, right, up, right, down, left, down, left, and then back to the right, and then down, left, up, left, up, right, and then for level three, we're going to go up, left, up, right, down, right, up, left, down, right, and then left, up, and then down, right, up, left. And then level five, excuse me, level four, <laughs> we're gonna go left, and then right, down, left, up, right, down, left, and then back to the right, down, up, left, down, and right. And then level five, we are going to go up, right, up, left, down, left, up, right, down, left, down, right, down, left, up, right, up, right, up, and then down. All right, and then level six, we are gonna go left, up, left, down, right, down, left, down, right, up, right, up, and right. All right, and then level seven, we're gonna go left, up, right, down, right, up, right, up, left, down, and then back up, and then right, down, left, up, down, left, up, left, up. All right, and then level eight, we are gonna go up, and then back down, left, up, right, down, right, up, right, up, left, down, left, and then right, and you should hit the horse right here, and then it should move as well. So we're gonna go right once more, up, and then down. All right, then level nine, we are gonna go up, right, up, left, down, left, down, up, and you should hit the cow right there. So from here, we're gonna go up again, and then left, up, right, down, right, down, and then back up, and then left, and you should hit the cow, and then we're gonna go down, left, up, and then come back down, and then left, and then right. So from here, we're gonna go left, up, left, up, right, down, left, down, right, down, left, up, right, down, right, up, left, up, left, down, right, up, right, and down. And that will finish up the puzzle tractor game. So you'll get your trophy as well as the button. 
So go ahead and exit back to the main menu here. And now we're gonna head up to the internet. So the INT icon. And of course we do need a passcode to get on and we found that earlier through the magic markers. And that code again is 365. So we have three, six, excuse me, 3685. <laughs> it's a digit there, so 3685. And now we are in, so go ahead and select game. And now you're gonna play Selfish Snake, which is your basic form of snake. You need to move it so it hits the apple of sorts and you will eventually grow. But this one is different because you can't lose. So if you hit your tail, it will just split into a new tail. So now we have two tails and you're just gonna keep doing this until you reach the high score of 400 or more. You will eventually reach a point where your snakes are pretty much taken up the entire screen and you can really just uh, idle it if you wanted to. You don't really have to move. Uh, that happens at around the uh, around the like 300 point mark or so. Um, so you can definitely idle it for a couple of minutes, but just keep playing until you reach that score and then we'll go from there. All right, so once again, once you reach towards the end and closer to 400, your screen will start to fill with all of the snakes that you've been creating, just making this able to be idled. So once you hit 400, go ahead and hit continue. And this, of course, will end the game and then you'll get your trophy as well as the button. But before we do that, we're going to go down to where it says facts here on the bottom right. And then these are just answers to like random questions that you will get asked during the big fly encounter. The questions are all the same for everybody, so you won't be going through all of these, but there is a melody in here that we need to look at. So just scroll through all of these until you start to see a number sequence. All right, and there we go. And it basically says if you play this on a synthesizer, a spontaneous party will begin. So we do need to do that for an extra point. It's not for a trophy or anything. It's simply for just points, that's all. So go ahead and exit out of here. And then we're gonna go to where it says make on the bottom left. And this is basically where we're gonna get our crafting recipes for some of the items that we're gonna be making in the shed. So first is gonna be the paintbrush, which we need the short stick, glue and horsehair, which we all have. The fishing pole, we need the long stick, fishing line and fish hook, which again, we definitely have all three. Puppet theater, we need wood, nails, and sewing kit. Bicycle, we need the old rubber, old metal, and old leather. And then of course the thumb piano, which we have been waiting to make for a few things. We need the wood block screws and thin metal bits, neither of which we have just yet. So that is all we can do on the internet for now. So go ahead and exit out, and this is where you're gonna get all your buttons that we've just collected. And then we're gonna go upstairs, and then back to the bedroom. And now we're gonna interact with the papers and the magic markers one more time. The second part only works after you have already gone to the internet at least one time. If you haven't, it'll just give you the same drawings that you have already done. So you're just gonna do the same thing as before, just to walk across each of the pages to reveal some images here. And then the last one you need to draw is going to be the spider playing a harp. And when you finish this one, it's going to finish up the mini game. And then a record is going to appear on the ground just next to you. So go ahead and exit out. And then there's the record. So go ahead and pick that up before you go anywhere. So from here, we're going to go inside the closet and then interact with the synthesizer. And now we're going to play that spontaneous party melody that we just found. And that, of course, is going to be 116-878-345-224. And that should start 
a little party in the closet here. You don't have to wait for too long, just as long as it starts and you get your point and all that stuff. So just stay here for a couple of seconds to make sure it registers. And then you can go ahead and exit out of the closet. So now we're gonna go back downstairs and make our way to the kitchen. From the computer room, we're just gonna go left twice and then interact with the fridge and grab the stick of butter that's inside. And then we're gonna go left once to the living room. And because the storm happened, we do get the after the storm record here. So go ahead and pick that up. And then we're gonna exit the house. And the scenery has changed just a little bit since it has stormed. We're going to find these little mud pits here, not all over the place, but definitely more random than they already were. So go ahead and use your shovel on the mud just in front of the house here. And this is where we're going to get the screws. And then interact with the ant hill right here. And now we need to find six ants that are hiding within the house. And we're actually gonna do this with Fanny. So go ahead and switch back to Fanny. And she should still be in the bathroom. So use the empty jar on the ants inside the bathroom. And you can only do one set of ants at a time. So this is gonna be a slightly time consuming. But once you have those ants, go ahead and go all the way left and out the house. and then interact with the ant hill with that jar. And now we need to go get the other five. So go back inside the house. And now we're gonna head to the bedroom closet. So we're basically doing the ones that are the furthest away first and then doing the ones that are closer last. So we're just gonna go right to the computer room and then up the stairs and then right into the bedroom and then down into the closet. And the ants are right there on the floor, so use that jar to pick them up. And then again, we're gonna go and take them all the way back outside. Okay, and again, just interact with the ant hill with the jar. And this will bring them home. So now we need four more. So now we're gonna head up to the rooftop. So we're gonna go right and then up the stairs in the computer room. And then up the ladder. And then go ahead and grab the ants. And while we're here, we are gonna go ahead and get the seagulls done so we don't have to come back up here. It's kind of tedious because this is the last thing we need up here, so there's no sense in backtracking. So if you remember correctly, when we were looking at the bird and bug book, we flipped to the seagull page and there was that little sequence of numbers that we can play. This is where we're gonna use that. So go ahead and interact with the seagulls. And it's gonna bring up that little music menu that we had with the other instruments. It's gonna be the same right stick for everything. And then L2 for one through four, R2 for five through six. So the code for this one is gonna be six, five, eight, five, three, two, one. And this again, unlocks the fast travel system in the game, which allows us to access the mountain area now. So you can see that up in the top right but we're not gonna use this just yet. We at least have it open now and can use it once we are ready to. So go ahead and exit out of the map here. And now we're gonna head back downstairs and take the ants we just picked up outside. And again, just interact with the ant hill to actually bring them home. And now we're gonna go to the little office area. So just right once from the computer room. So all the way right on the bottom floor, basically. And 
And of course the ants will be in the middle of the floor, so use the empty jar on them to pick them up. And then exit back out the house. And then interact with the ant hill to bring them home. And we're almost done. We got two more. So the next one is going to be in the kitchen. So just go past the living room and then on the dining table is where the ants will be. So go ahead and pick those up. And then bring them back outside. And then interact with the ant hill to actually bring them home. And then one more. So head back inside and these ones are going to be just in the living room. So it should be kind of quick on this one. Use the jar to pick them up, bring them outside, and then bring them to the ant hill. And this will bring all the ants home and you will get the watermelon in return of bringing them home. So this is what we're going to need for the seed goblin. So that one is all set and ready to go. And from here, we're just going to go right once to the mailbox and interact with this box here and you're gonna get the eyeball costume and this is your reward for completing the maggot mayhem game. And then go through the fence and pick up that white fabric that's just by the water here. And then we're gonna go right once and then up twice. And then we're gonna go right one more time cross over that bridge and then right again and we're gonna go up and then interact with that tire that's sitting just by the water here and this is gonna start the topsy-turvy tubing minigame and here you can either control it or not it's completely up to you but you just want to turn your camera so it's putting Fanny excuse me I always said tux putting Fanny in the direction that the water is flowing you can hit the walls, that doesn't really matter. You just kind of need to get to the end on this one. Okay, so once you reach the end, you will unlock the topsy-turvy tubing trophy as well as the button, and you also get a record for completing that. So you will unlock the river of forgotten dream shapes, and of course there is another record down on the ground here that we can pick up as well. So that's two very easy records for your collection. And from here, we're going to go right once. And then interact with the flamingo sitting in the water, and this will add that to your collection. And because that is your 12th bird found, you will get your bird trophy, which again, we will be selling. So don't get too used to having it. And then pick up the bloody ore that is sitting on the ground. Then we're gonna go down once and then interact with the water poppies to add these to your collection. And then interact with the shell down on the ground to pick it up. And we're actually gonna use this for the ocean goblin because he wants to hear what the ocean sounds like. And of course these shells 
kind of mimic that sound. So hold it up to your ear to just to complete this little part here. And that of course will be added to your inventory. And then go ahead and go inside the shack. And then pick up the green paint that's sitting on the floor. And then interact with the note on the table here. And this is gonna be the first scavenger hunt clue that you get. We do need to complete all of these to unlock the desert temple area. So we'll do, I wanna say two as we're going through it and then we'll clean up the rest after we get through the quote unquote final boss fight of sorts. So uh, we'll just start this here and then end it much later on. So that is again, our first scavenger hunt clue. And we're actually going to leave Fanny here for just a few while we switch back to Tux and clean up some stuff just outside of the house. So go ahead and switch to him. And you should be just in front of the house here. So we're going to go right once, then just through the gate. Maybe. There we go. <laughs> and then down once. And you should come to the frog. And from here, we're going to go left. And then that same mud puddle that we interacted with for the glitch is now all muddy because it rained. So go ahead and interact with that to make sure that you do get covered in mud. You won't actually be able to see it, but he did say like, yes, now I am very dirty and I could probably use a shower, which you're kind of going to do. So from here, we are going to go down once and then left twice. And this is going to bring us back to the log that we climbed in earlier. And the storm did bring in this wood block down by the water, so go ahead and grab that. And now we're going to go all the way up until we reach the moon sign. So I believe it's going to be two or three times up. Do not go inside the fence, just stay outside of it. We don't need to open that just yet. And there's our moon sign, and here we just need to grab a bug. So go ahead and interact with the rock to add it to your collection. And now we're going to go all the way up until we can't go up anymore. So past the tree and then up to this rock where we got the cricket. And then just by this mushroom here is another note. This is going to be scavenger hunt clue number two. Yeah. Only the busy ant can smell the inside of a turtle shell. And of course, you remember when we looked at the turtle shell, we saw an ant inside. So we are going to have to interact with that one more time to make sure that we get the note associated with clue number three. But for now, we are going to go right once and then pick up the egg that is sitting on the log here. Yep. And then we're going to use our shovel on the little mud pit just next to it. And we're going to get the small metal bits here that we need for a thumb piano. Now we're going to interact with the red feather that fell out of the tree during that little cat sequence that we did earlier. And this is going to be the first of the seven cat clues that we need to collect. So you can't see them right now, but it's like paw prints, scratch marks, the water bowl that we placed, fish bones, like all sorts of cat related stuff that we're going to be getting. So go ahead and close this screen and now we're going to head to the shed. So go left once and we're going to go down once. Excuse me, we're gonna go down, I think three times until we reach the gate. So yeah, so three times. And then we're gonna use the gate key on the gate to actually open it up. And then we're gonna go right once and then up once and then into the shed. In here, we're gonna make quite a few items, uh, the costumes we're gonna make, and then all five of those items we found the crafting recipes for on the internet. So. Go ahead and go up to the workbench and first we're going to get the costumes out of the way. The first one is going to be the ghost costume and you need to combine the scissors with the white fabric that we just picked up. There you go, there's your ghost costume. And now for the fox costume, we are going to combine the sewing kit with the fox fur that we found. So the sewing kit from the bedroom closet. And then the fox fur that we found just next to that skull. Let's see where we put it. There we go. And then we have our fox costume. And now we need to make our alien, which is going to use the basketball and the green paint. So we have our basketball and then the green paint.
And there we have our alien costume. And now we're gonna make basically the tools that we're gonna be using. So first is gonna be the paintbrush and you're gonna combine the short stick, the glue and the horse hair. There we go, we got our little paintbrush. And now we're gonna make our fishing pole. So that's gonna use the long stick, the fishing line, and the fish hook. Next, we're gonna make the puppet theater and that's gonna take the wood, the nails, and the sewing kit, which we already used, but we can use it again. So, see we got the wood and then the nails we picked up from the back of the car and then the sewing kit. And again, this is gonna make the puppet theater, which we're gonna use to make a movie here in just a minute. And then we're gonna make the thumb piano and that's gonna be the wood block, the screws, and the metal bits. So we just picked up the wood block not too long ago. And then the screws we also picked up not too long ago. There we go. And then of course the metal bits. And there we go. We have our little thumb piano. And then the last thing we're going to make is the cupcake that we need for the sweet goblin. And that is going to be the flour, sugar, and the stick of butter. So let's look for the... I think the sugar is going to be first here. Yeah. And then the flour and then of course the stick of butter there we go now we have our cupcake so that'll finish up this part just for now and now go ahead and exit out of the workbench and we're going to use the camcorder battery on the camcorder to power it up and now we can make our movie. So you are gonna make one of each of these. It's gonna be one claymation, one puppet, one live action, one experimental, and one documentary. You are only gonna sell these top two, but these bottom three will get you some points. So just go through each of them and then complete them as needed, and then we can move on. Okay, and for the claymation one, you're basically gonna be doing an art imitates life kind of situation. Clay, Tux, and Fanny are going to be doing the same thing that you are actually doing in the game. And you have a deflated soccer ball that you need to reinflate so that the two can play together. Fanny can only move to the left and Tux can only move to the right. And to switch control between the two, you just need to have them touch in the middle and then you'll be able to control both of them. Tux will need to find a wallet on the right side so that Fanny can buy an air pump on the left side and then the shovel slash spoon that Fanny finds on the left is going to go to Tux to find the soccer ball on the right. So I hope that kind of made a little sense. If you can't figure out what to do, just keep going back and forth, like legit, just go all the way left and then all the way right. And then you will kind of figure out what you need to do from there. So go ahead and finish this up and then we will move on to the next video.
then once you're done with the claymation video uh, go ahead and make the rest of the videos in the shed for the puppet theater you can just choose the left response the left or right response really each time to quickly finish it up then just spam cross to get through the experimental and then the live action and then just watch through the documentary. It's only gonna take a couple of minutes to get through all of them, and then we can leave the shed and continue on with the story. Okay, so once you have all the videos done, go ahead and exit the shed, and we're going to go back to the house. So just go down once, and then right once, and then head on inside, and now we're going to head back to the bathroom that's in the bedroom. So go all the way right to the computer room, and then up the stairs. And then we're going to go right into the bedroom and then right once more into the bathroom. And if you remember correctly, we did just jump into a puddle of mud, so we do need to wash that off now. So go ahead and interact with the bathtub to take a bath. And this will reveal the bad boy bubble video game, so go ahead and pick that up off the floor. And then head back left to the computer room. And then interact with the computer and now you're just going to play that bad boy bubble game so for this one you are going to be playing as a bubble that you need to ever so gently get all the way down to the bottom while avoiding as many obstacles as you can you can get hit up to five times before getting a game over and if you do get a game over you will just restart back on whatever level you were currently working on so again if you got game over on level two you'll start back on level two got game over on level four you'll start back on level four so just go through all of the levels here Thank <laughs> you. 
Okay, and once you beat level 5, that will complete the game, so you'll get your trophy as well as your button. But we also get a prize at the mailbox for this one, so go ahead and exit out of the house. And we're going to go right once to the mailbox. And then pick up the bubbles that are on the ground just next to it. And we're going to need this for a few things, mostly the astronaut spider as well as the bubble goblin. So once you have those, we're going to switch back to Fanny, who should still be in a, the shack on the other island just across the way. So once you are switched to her, go ahead and use the bubbles on the spider that is inside the web there. And this will create the astronaut spider for our collection. Okay, so now we're done here. So exit out of the shed and then we're going to go left. And then interact with the pepper plant to actually get the hot pepper. And then interact with the rock to collect another bug. And this is going to be the praying mantis. And then cross over the stone bridge just to the left. And now we're going to go up once. And then use the shovel on the little mud pit right here. And this is going to get you another record for your collection. So it's going to be the beehive record. And now we're going to go up once. And now we're going to go ahead and get the fishing out of the way. So this tree stump right here, that's just next to the panda plant. Go ahead and make sure I said that right. Go ahead and use the fishing pole on the stump to start the fishing mini game. And then put the worm on the hook. And then here you just need to hit cross to actually lower your line down into the water. And then once something bites, just hit cross again to bring it up. So there's going to be four items that we're collecting here. The first one is going to be a record. And then the next two items are going to be the old rubber as well as the old leather. So let's go ahead and grab those two. There we have our old rubber. And then the old leather. And then the final thing is just going to be an everyday standard fish. So go ahead and grab that. And then you are going to automatically put this on the stump that you are sitting on. This finishes all the fishing you'll ever need to do in this game. And this is basically prepping for the cat. So the cat will come and actually eat the fish and leave the fish bones later on. But until then, we do need to get through two more games of the Wiggle Worm little trilogy here. And this one is going to be the worm going through the fish's digestive system and then going home. So Wiggle Worm 2 is getting through the fish. So just as before... You're going to use cross or square to just make your way through the fish. Yeah, yeah, basically. Okay, and so once the worm escapes out of the fish, now it needs to go home. So we're going to play Wiggle Worm 3. And this is just you going into the ground and then following the tunnel all the way back to your family. Right, and then finishing all three of the Wiggle Worm games will unlock the Wiggle Worm Trilogy Trophy as well as the button. So just go ahead and go through these last few credits here. 
Here we go. And now from here, we can go ahead and switch to the cat and start prepping the rest of the cat clues that we need to find. So again, right stick, and then we're gonna switch to the cat. And you should still be up in the tree here from when we made quick work of that poor bird that was annoying Fanny and Tux. So go ahead and exit out of the tree. And then we're gonna go left once and then interact with this little mud puddle here. And then you're gonna dip your paw in and this is just gonna leave some muddy prints for Tux and Fanny to find. There we go, there's our little paw prints right there. And now we're gonna go down once and then interact with this tree right here to leave some scratch marks on it. That one, nice and easy peasy. So now we're gonna go all the way down And you'll basically end up at the uh, tree trunk that Tux went down earlier. And then we're going to go all the way right. And then we're going to cross over that little tree bridge that we created. And now we're going to go up until we find those old boots from earlier. So it's going to be about three screens up and one or two screens to the right but just keep following the water's edge until you reach them. And there we go. And go ahead and interact with them to leave the next clue. So we are gonna eat the tea bag, which is not recommended for cats, I'm assuming. And then from here, we're just gonna control our little funky cat right now. So we're gonna go right, and then right one more time. And then when you get to the spinning house, we're gonna go up and then just interact with either of the bug legs and this is gonna make the cat puke. And then we can go forward from here. So there's our nifty little cat clue of cat puke. So absolutely beautiful. And now we're gonna go right twice. And then down once. And this was that tree stump that we were just fishing at. So go ahead and interact with the fish to eat it. And this is gonna leave the fish bones in its place. And then we're gonna go down and then down one more time and then interact with the little bowl of water that we poured earlier. Take a few sips of the water. And then we're gonna pee on the sunflowers. All right, and now we're gonna go all the way up Gonna pass all the flowers and everything that we found. And we're gonna cross over the little wooden bridge here and go left once and then left one more time and then interact with the rock to take a nap on it. And now we're gonna switch over to the fleas. So from here, just go ahead and interact with the flea that's sitting directly in front of you. And it's just gonna tell you about some eggs that you can find but first we need to talk to basically the leader flea. So go up twice. And then interact with Balzari. I'm assuming that's how it's pronounced. And now we need to find four sets of flea eggs. So if you go down once, this is gonna be basically a three by three grid area. And they're all gonna be in the top left, bottom left, top right, and bottom right. So go left once for the top left and then down twice for the bottom left. And then right twice for the bottom right. And then up twice for the top right. And now we're gonna to return to our little friend. So go left once and then up once. 
And now we need to find a way to create a bridge to the cat's tail right there. And that's basically going to be dead fleas is what we're going to use. So go down once, then pick up the dead flea, then go left once, and then down once, then pick up that flea, and then down once, and then right once, and then pick up that flea, and then right once, and then up once. And then up one more time. And go ahead and grab that guy. And then we're going to go left. And then down. And if this flea is not dead, just talk to him. And then leave the area and come back. And then he should be healed over. So once he is, go ahead and interact with him to pick him up. And then we're going to go up twice. And unfortunately, our best friend over here did not make it. So go ahead and interact with him to finish the bridge to the cat's tail and then make your way up to the cat. And now the cat is nice and itchy, so we're gonna go ahead and use the branch. So we're gonna go all the way left. And then once you reach that rock and mushroom, we're gonna go down four times. So you're going to go down past the gate to the yard and you should end in an area with a tree, some snake skin, and a rock. So down past the gate. And here we go. We have the snake skin right here, the rock, and then interact with the branch to scratch your back with it. And this will leave some cat fur on the ground for Tux and Fanny to find. Okay, before we switch back to Fanny, we are gonna switch back to the flea really quick and get another record. So once you're on the flea, you're actually on the cat right now. You're gonna go right and then up until you reach a little club area and you're just gonna idle here until the song finishes, at which point the DJ will thank you for listening and reward you with a copy of his album on a record to add to your collection. All right, so there we go. He's now thanking you for sticking around. And again, that does add his record to your collection. So from here, we can go ahead and switch back to Fanny, who should still be by the fishbone over here. So go ahead and interact with the fishbones and that'll get us our next cat clue. And then we're gonna go down once and then past the little patch of grass here and then down to the sunflowers. So interact with the dead sunflower to get the next cat clue. And then we're gonna go left once and then cross the bridge down on the bottom and then down one more time and then interact with the rock here to add the unicorn beetle to your collection. And then open up your briefcase so that we can switch our costume. And we're actually going to put on the raincoat here. And this is going to allow us to go through the waterfall. So just go right through the waterfall. And here we have our little unicorn friend. Before we interact with him, go ahead and interact with the flowers to add the wild flowers to your collection. And then just interact with the unicorn to see that he will disappear if you do touch him. So to bring him back, we're just going to exit out of the waterfall area and then go back inside. And this time we're gonna use the hot pepper on the unicorn. So we pick this up on that small island after the little topsy-turvy ride we did. And once the unicorn disappears, we can go ahead and pick up the horn that it dropped on the ground. And this is a weapon that we'll be using in the desert temple, which the ore, like the bloody ore that we picked up, on some of the enemies, you do have to hit them two or three times for them to go down. But with the unicorn horn, you only have to hit them once. So you can one shot everything except for the bosses in that temple. So we'll be using this a little later on in the game. So once you have that, go ahead and exit out of the waterfall area. And then we're going to go up. And just on the ground is going to be this record. So go ahead and grab that. And this will unlock a trophy as well as a button for you, basically saying you found the unicorn and you picked up its little record. So go ahead and go across the bridge. And then we're gonna go left once. And then we're gonna use the shovel on this little mud pit right here. And 
And this is gonna get us the old metal that we need to actually make the bicycle with. And then from here, we're gonna go right once and then up once back to the horse. And we're gonna use the shovel on the little mud puddle, on the little mud puddle here as well. And this is gonna get us the magic maker disc that we are gonna be playing on the computer. And then from here, we're gonna go over to the left and then we're gonna go up and then up once more and then interact with the boots that the cat so very graciously puked all over. And now we're gonna go down and left and cross that bridge that we've been using a few times now. So it's gonna be down about four times, I think, and then left two or three times. So there's our snail and left and then left across the bridge and left once more. And now we can get our rabbit out of its little hole here. So when you're standing next to it, go ahead and pull out the thumb piano. And now we're gonna play the bunny melody that we found earlier. So it's gonna work the same, same right stick plus L2. This melody is gonna be two, three, three, one, four, two. And this is gonna cause the bunny to kind of start to come out of its hole, but not all the way. But now we can use the carrot on the bunny to lure it out the rest of the way. And then just go ahead and pet it a few times to get a trophy as well as an in-game button. And then from here, we're gonna go all the way left. And you're gonna reach that tree stump that Tux was climbing in earlier. And then we're gonna go up once and then interact with the cat fur that's on the ground right here to get the next cat clue. And then we're gonna go up three times. So we're gonna go past the gate and then past that little moon sign and then up to a tree. And this of course is the tree that the cat scratched. So look at the scratch marks to get the next cat clue. And now we just need one more, which is the paw prints. So we're gonna go up one more time. And this is where the mud prints were that the cat made. So just interact with those to get the final cat clue. All right, and from here, we can go ahead and switch back the tux. And now we're gonna head inside the house. So from the mailbox, you're just gonna go left once and then inside. And now we're gonna head to the computer room. So go right a couple of times until you reach it. And instead of the computer, we're gonna interact with the easel down here. Go ahead and use the paintbrush on it to actually start painting. And we need to make one of each of these five paintings. So we're gonna start with the whale. You only need to be drawing for about, I would say about 20, 30 seconds for it to register that you are in fact completing this drawing. If you try to cut out too early, it'll just be like, oh, I don't know, I don't think you're done. I'm not sure. So just keep going through all of them. And then once you finish, we will do the last one, which is the Ego Batola. I think that's how it's pronounced. I'm not exactly sure. It's not really a real animal by any sort, um, but we do need to do something special to get that one. So just keep going through all of these.
And then the free form can be anything you want it to be. I'm just going to do a quick little spiral here. It doesn't matter too much. Um, doing all of these gets you all of the points, but we're only going to be selling the four that are actually named. So free form is just to get you another point added to your score. Okay, so now if you try to draw the Ego Patalo, I'm assuming that's how it's pronounced, it's going to tell you that you don't know what it looks like, so you can't draw it. So to do that, we're going to go right once into the little office area, and then just interact with this Happy Animals little console in the back of the room, and it's going to open up on the Ego Patalo, <laughs> whatever we're going to call it. So the iguana, hippopotamus, and armadillo. So now that we know what it looks like, we can go ahead and draw it. So exit out of here, and then go back to the easel, head and draw that mysterious animal from that little book. As you can see, we do have a blank canvas here, so you can just go ahead and draw whatever you wanna draw. It's basically gonna be another freeform painting that we're gonna do. It doesn't have to be anywhere close to the ego patalo, or however we're pronouncing that. You can just do whatever. Just make sure you're drawing for about 15, 20 seconds to finish this up. Just do a few little random things. It looks just like it. What are you guys talking about? It's perfect. Okay, so once you have that, that'll finish up all five paintings and get you all of the points that we can get here. So go ahead and go up and we're gonna interact with the computer and go to the internet, so the INT icon, and then go to paint, and we're gonna sell the four paintings that we have here to get some money. And then go up to video, and we're just gonna upload the claymation video as well as the puppet show. And then go to sell, and you're gonna sell all three of the trophies that you've earned in game. Obviously you can't sell your PlayStation trophies, but the in-game trophies that we just got up to this point, we can sell for some money. So once you have that, go over to buy. And then first we're gonna purchase this camera, which we need for the dark forest section here coming up. And then we're gonna go back to buy again, and we're gonna buy all three records and both games. So make sure you buy all five items. All right, and then just go back and then we're gonna go to buy one more time. And this is gonna let us buy the tuxedo and fancy hat, which of course is a costume. We don't really need that for anything. This is purely for collectible and points purposes. So now we're done here and we can go ahead and start playing some of the video games that we've collected up to this point. So exit out of the internet. And the first one we're gonna play is the Magic Maker game. And this is basically just a text-based RPG. You can just kind of spam cross to get through it all. You don't have to read it if you don't want to. If you do, more power to you. Just pause the video if you do decide to play it legitimately. Okay, and once you complete that game, you will unlock a trophy here. I was having some video trouble with this section here, so I've had to replay it so my trophies won't pop for the next two games as well as this one. Um, but in-game, you should get your trophies, but you will also get your button for in-game. And then from here, we're gonna go to Grand Gorilla, which is gonna be the GG. And on this one, we are gorillas, of course, that need to find uh, vases in the levels and smash them with a bat. You are timed on this, but you can find little Cheetos that will give you extra time. I think they're Cheetos. They're just little orange things. <laughs> um, but yeah, so the first level, you need to find two vases to smash, and then two and three, you need to find three. So just go through all three levels to get your trophy as well as your button.
Okay, so once you finish all three levels, you will get your trophy. Of course, again, mine's not popping because I've had to re-record this. And then you can go ahead and back out of the game back to the desktop. And now we're going to play Reliable Robot, which of course is the RR. And on this one, you are a robot that's supposed to be saving or helping humans, which is not quite going to work out the way that we are intending it to. But each level will have a little guy with a red arrow above him. You need to kill him. I know it's not quite helping, but you know, we are trying our best and that's all that matters, right? That, that's all that matters. So you're going to go through 10 levels here. Just smash them with either your foot, with buildings, little debris pieces. It doesn't really matter. And then once you finish the 10th level, you will get the trophy as well as the button. Okay, so again, after 10 levels, you will get your trophy, so go ahead and exit out of the game. And now we're going to exit out of the entire computer here as well, and this is just showing you we did, in fact, get those buttons. So now go ahead and exit out of the house. And then we're going to go right to the mailbox. And then interact with this box here and we're going to get the wizard costume. This is your reward for completing the Magic Maker video game. And now before we go any further, I'm just going to go left once back to the house. And now you're going to collect your four leaf clover. So again, there are going to be these little green plants right here. You need to collect 10 before you'll get your four leaf clover. So just keep switching between the screens and then just collect them as you go. So just exit and come back. And I did find that the apple tree and house was a pretty good pair of screens to kind of uh, switch between to get these. Both of them do have clovers that spawn and they're pretty close to each other so you don't have to go too far away or walk too far to get them. But it should only take a few minutes to get all 10 depending on your luck with the spawns of course and I just missed one. <laughs> but just keep going at it and then I will meet back up with you guys once you have your four leaf clovers. Okay, so once you have your four leaf clover, we can go ahead and do a quick check of our inventory just to make sure that you have everything you need before we do this next part. So in your inventory, you should have the following items. The beach ball, the gas mask, the four leaf clover, the watermelon slice, the conch shell, bubbles, the cupcake, the camera, the unicorn horn, the ore with blood on it, and the fly swatter. So make sure you have all of those items before going forward. If you did miss anything or if you are missing anything, all of the timestamps for each item are listed below in an attempt to kind of help you navigate and kind of just figure out what you have missed and where to find them. And then once you do have everything, we can go ahead and continue to finish up this part here in the house before we move over to the dark forest. So once you're ready, we are gonna go all the way left Oops, don't go into the patio. <laughs> so from the house, you're going to go left, I think it's twice. So go past the patch of grass here. Then we're going to go through the gate and then just interact with this sign. This actually leads to the dark forest, but we need to do a little bit of a night sequence before we can actually get in. So just interact with the sign. 
and then choose yes when it asks if you want the sun to go down. All right, so now that it's nighttime, we're gonna go ahead and interact with this pile of sticks here. Use the lighter on it to create a bonfire. All right, and from here, we're gonna go left once and then up once to that moon sign and then go ahead and interact with the moon and you'll become a little astronaut. And all you need to do here is just bump the earth so that it flies off the screen. And then once that's done, you will unlock the astronaut costume. And then from here, we're gonna go right twice. So past the shed and we're gonna end up at the apple tree. And then just interact with the fireflies down here and we're just gonna play a little mini game where you have to catch them. You don't have to catch any really, but just, well, that's a lie. Make sure you catch at least one, but you don't have to go too crazy with trying to get a high score or anything. You just need one. And this will add the firefly to your insect collection. And then once you have one, you can either keep going or just let the time run out by idling it. Either way, just wait for it to finish. Okay, so once you have those, we're gonna go right once and then down twice and you should come to a telescope down in the bottom corner of the yard. Go ahead and interact with the telescope and now we're gonna find a couple of constellations up in the sky. You need to find them and interact with them. So once you find one, be sure to hit cross so you get a little bit of a dialogue regarding it. And then after you find all of these, the game will end and you'll ask if you wanna go to bed. Go ahead and hit yes and completing this constellation puzzle or mini game of sorts whatever we're calling it uh, you will unlock a record for your collection as well so this is required for points as well as story Okay, so again, once you find them all and interact with them, it'll ask you if you want to go to bed, go ahead and choose yes to finish up the day. Okay, and when you wake up, both Tux and Fanny will be standing just outside of the entrance to the dark forest. And before we go in there, we are going to do a quick double check to make sure everybody is on the same page in regards to collections and the points. So go ahead and open up your collections menu. All right, so the only thing that should potentially be different on the screen is the score. You should either have 347 points or 348. Again, I did miss an owl back in the earlier part of the game, so cleaning that up has kind of messed up my little tracking here. The collections, however, should all be as shown because I did go back and get that pesky little owl. So you should have 21 buttons, 32 birds and bugs, 13 flowers. We of course have all the clouds and all of the cat clues, 30, excuse me, 26 records, 17 discs, and 12 costumes. So just make sure yours matches what you're seeing on the screen here. And then we can go ahead and get started on the dark forest and befriend the some big scary goblins. Okay, and just to make sure we're also on the same page as far as who we're controlling, you should currently be in control of Tux. 
So go ahead and go on inside the dark forest. And the first thing we're gonna do is the photo adventure. And you're supposed to look for animals to take photos of, but you can actually just snap 12 photos just without actually seeing anything. You just need to empty the entire uh, film cartridge. So just take 12. You can look for the animals if you want to. It's completely up to you. Obviously, I'm not going to do that just to save some time here. Okay, and once you're done, this will be the kind of like official entrance to the dark forest. As you can see, it does split. The top right path will take you back to the photo adventure. The bottom right path will take you back home. And then going left will take you deeper into the forest. So we're going to go left. And we're first going to meet up with the clover goblin here. And we're going to give him that four leaf clover that we picked up earlier to get him out of the way. And then we're going to go left again. And then pick up the record that's sitting in the middle of the little pathway here. And this is a deer leg. You don't have to interact with it, but just so you know what this is. Uh, this is a little secret area that we will be able to access once we befriend all of the goblins, so we can't do that just yet. So from here, we're going to go left one more time. And then interact with the termites that are sitting on the log. And just super, super quick, make sure you are interacting with the termites here and not the log. You want to make sure you get that screen where it actually zooms in on the bug to ensure that it's added to your collection. I did not realize at the time of recording this that I interacted with the log and not the bug. So I actually missed it right here, which is absolutely perfect. So that does affect your score a little bit. You will either be at 351 or 352. So just keep that in mind as we get through this forest part. And yeah, we can go ahead and move forward. And then we're going to go down once and interact with the bones on the ground here. And this is going to add the dead baby bird to your collection, which is just absolutely wonderful, of course. So now we're going to go left twice until you reach a well. And then we're going to go down once. And here we have another waterfall that we can pass through, but we do need the raincoat. So open up your little briefcase and then put on the raincoat and then head on through the waterfall. And interact with the fairy here and she's gonna give you a little side quest to collect four maple seeds. And these will be falling down from the sky as we kind of switch between the scenes. And I'll show you here in just a second. So. Just exhaust all of the dialogue here and then exit back out of the waterfall. And we'll see if we can get one to kind of appear here. So if you just keep going back and forth between a couple of the scenes, you will eventually see a maple leaf start to fall down from the top of the screen all the way to the bottom. All right, so there we go. And then just interact with it and then catch it with your hand. You need to do this four times so you have a total of four seeds you can do that as we go or of course i will tell you when it's the point like you need these before we go any further so from here uh from the sorry from the waterfall we're gonna go down once and then interact with this rock to get another bug and we also need to get a bird here oh let me get that maple leaf really quick since it's here and we do have a bird. We have a woodpecker that we need to see. So if your binoculars are not showing up, again, just exit and come back into the screen until they do. Being a little bit of stubborn one on this one. There we go. Okay, so once you get that notification, go ahead and use your binoculars to see the Olsen woodpecker. Now we're going to go left once, then we're going to interact with the beehive to pick up the honeycomb. And here we have another bird that we can get, which is the robot bird. So again, if the binoculars are not showing up, just go ahead and exit the screen and come back a few times. And I just missed it right there. There we go. And again, we're looking for the robot bird. So once that's added to your collection, we're going to go ahead and go down once 
and here we're gonna reach the seed goblin. So you're gonna use the watermelon on this goblin to start a little seed game. And the main gist of this one is to aim your character and just kind of play with the power to shoot a seed to hit the goblin. So for instance, going up and down, we'll do the angle, like adjust the angle, and then left and right, we'll adjust the power. So we need to find the right combination of those two to get up and over this tree and then hit him. All right, and it's gonna be best three out of five for this. So as soon as you beat him three times, he will disappear. So now we just need to work on the other goblins. So from here, we're gonna go up once and then left once. And here we're gonna find the bubble goblin. And we're gonna go ahead and use the bubbles on him. And for this one, we just need to hit the arrows as shown above our heads. And this will pretty much blow up a balloon. So you can use two fingers if it's easier for you. Just make sure that you're hitting the direction pretty much as quickly as you can. So like as soon as it shows up, you wanna be hitting the button. And this is gonna be best two out of three for this one. Okay, so once you beat him, we will befriend him, and now we can get to work on all of the others. So from here, we're gonna go right three times, so we meet up with a little bear. Well, he's not so little, but we meet up with a bear. And we're gonna go ahead and give him the honey that we just picked up uh, by the robot bird just a little earlier. And then we're gonna go down once, 
And here we're gonna have the sweet goblin who we're just quite simply gonna give that cupcake to and that'll clear him quick and right out of the way. And then we're gonna go up and then right. And then go ahead and pick up the saw that is sitting by the tree stump. And then we're gonna go right once more to find the sleepy goblin. And here we're gonna play our thumb piano to put him to sleep. So grab your thumb piano and we're gonna play the sleepy goblin melody that we picked up earlier. And that's gonna be one, three, three, four, six, five. And there we go, that put him right to sleep. So that one is done. So now we can exit out of this area. So we're gonna go left twice. And then go past the bear and then up to the waterfall and if you don't have all four maple seeds yet now you will need to be getting them just keep going back and forth between these two scenes to go ahead and grab those so i think this is number three and number four Okay, so once you have all four, go ahead and go through the waterfall and back to the ferry. And then use the seeds on the ferry. And this unlocks a trophy, a button, as well as kind of an extra life once we get to the desert temple. If you get a game over in the temple, the ferry will res you with full health so that you can try again. So this is pretty much a safety measure, kind of, you know, like in Zelda and all those games. So once you have that, we're gonna exit back out of the waterfall. And then we're gonna go up once and then right twice. And then back up to the log where we found the termites. And we're going to use the saw we just picked up on the log. And that will, of course, clear this pathway here. So now we're going to go up once and interact with the rose bush to add it to your collection. And then we're going to go left. And just ignore this puddle for now. We don't need it. We are going to be coming back here once we get a key. We need to clean it in this puddle. But for now, we're just going to go left again. And then interact with the flowers to add the skull perennials to your collection. And from here, we're going to go ahead and change into the fox costume. So open up your little briefcase. And again, we did make the fox when we were in the shed earlier, so you should have it on you. If you don't, just check the timestamps below for when that happened. And then with the fox costume on, we're going to go up once. And we have a little fox friend here, so interact with him and then give him a pet. And then he will drop a record on the ground for you, so go ahead and pick that up to add it to your collection. And then go up once and then interact with the dead butterfly sitting on the ground to add that to your collection. And then interact with the flowers to add that to your collection. And now we're gonna go left once. And here we have Smelly Goblin who just wants a hug. So go ahead and use the gas mask on him to give him a nice big old hug. And that of course will make him happy and he will disappear. So from here, we are gonna go right twice. And we're going to pick up this rope and bucket, and this is what we're going to use to fix the well that we passed earlier. But for now, we're going to go up once. And here we have the ocean goblin, so give him that shell that we picked up earlier. And then we're going to go back down, and then right once. And here we have the beach ball goblin, so we're going to give him the beach ball that we found in that bunker. And for this mini game, it's basically a game of keep it up slash volleyball, if you will. But we need the ball to land on the ground on his side to get points. And it's going to be the first of five points wins. So this might take a few tries, just a heads up, because it can get a little hard to control. Case in point right there. 
but just keep going at it and eventually it will land on his side. Um, he's not obviously super good, so yeah, just be patient with it. Okay, and once you beat him, you will unlock the goblin's trophy as well as the in-game button for that. And now we can access that area that was only available if we befriended them all. So from here, go ahead and exit out of this screen. Here we go. <laughs> and then we're going to go left. And then when you reach the dead butterfly, we're going to go down. And then we're going to go right. So past this puddle and back to the rose bush. And then we're going to go down through the log that we sawed through earlier. And then go left at the dead baby bird. And then at the end of this little pathway will be the well that we passed earlier. So go ahead and use the rope and bucket on that to fix it. And this is going to get us an old rusty key. So from here we're going to go back to the right. And then we're going to go up and then through that log again. And then left once to that green puddle of chemicals that we keep passing. And we're going to use the old rusty key on the puddle to clean it. And this is going to give us our gate key that we're going to use here in just a second. So from here, we're going to go left and then left again past the little skull perennials. And the next screen you come to should have a ghost in it, so we're going to switch to our ghost costume. So open up your little briefcase and then put on the ghost costume. And again, we made this when we were in the shed a little bit earlier in the game. And then just interact with the ghost and he's going to give you a record. So there's the record. Go ahead and pick it up. And then interact with this little lizard here on this little tombstone. And then we're going to go down once and then interact with the rock. And this is going to give us our little wooly bear caterpillar. And then we're going to go left once and then use that key we just washed off to open up the gate here. And then go left and you should arrive at some point at a seesaw should be one or two screens over. And then once you get here, we are going to need Fanny to join us. So go ahead and switch to Fanny. And we're going to make our way into the forest. And before we go to the seesaw, we are going to do a few things. So first, we're going to go left and then stop at that deer leg that we passed. And again, going up is a secret area that we can only enter once we befriend all of the goblins, which we've done. So go up and then pick up the record that's sitting in, on the ground right there. And then we're going to go right once. We should see the sweet goblin here and then up twice. And we have a new goblin friend here. I'm just going to go ahead and call him the computer goblin, I guess. But if you talk to him, he will give you the goblin games disc. So go ahead and grab that. And that's all we need here. So we're going to go ahead and exit. So go down twice. And then left once. And then down once. And then left. And then up through the little log that we saw it open. And we're just going to the seesaw where Tux is. So from here, we're going to go all the way left. We're going to pass through the cemetery. And then down once. And then all the way left. And this is going to give us the first ending of the game. There's technically two. There's one with the soccer ball, of course, but this is more of like the battle oriented ending, if you will. So when you're ready, go ahead and interact with the seesaw and you're basically going to be fighting a large fly here and it's going to act like a turn based fighting game where they attack and then you attack and then they attack and you attack and you kind of have to follow the instructions on how to actually hit them and how to miss them. So for instance, where it says swat the fly, so you have to swat the fly to actually hit it. And you'll see what I mean here in just a second once this is all done playing out and introducing the fly basically.
Okay, so again, once the fight starts, the giant fly is gonna attack first. So we just need to follow the instructions to prevent ourselves from getting hit. So we're gonna swat away the little arms here. And I did not do it in time, so I got hit, but it's basic instructions like that. So when we attack, it's gonna be the same thing. You just have to follow the instructions. So this one, I just gotta poke it in the eye. Here we go, fly gets hit. So keep doing this until the fly goes down and then we'll move into phase two. Okay, so once the fly goes down the first time, we're gonna move into phase two. The fly is not quite done just yet. Super fly fighter. And now we're gonna move into phase two, which is gonna be the street fighter sort of part of this. Uh, you can kind of just spam the punch button or the hit button as long as he's against the wall to get through this pretty quickly. It's very easy. It's very easy compared to what I feel like it should be. So again, we're just gonna spam cross while he's stuck against the wall and just absolutely murder him. Okay, so once he's down, we're gonna go ahead and move into phase three. And this is where the trivia portion of the fight comes into play. He will still attack us, but in order for us to attack him, we need to answer questions properly. So this will be the same for everybody. The first question is what is 9 times 256? And that's going to be 2304. So go ahead and select that to actually attack him. And then the next one is going to ask how many times a fly can pretty much beat its wings per minute. And that's going to be 1000 times per minute. And then the next one is what are human nails made out of? And that's gonna be keratin. So the first answer on number one. And that of course will take the fly down. So now we can move on to the final part. And if you couldn't guess it earlier, we are going to go through the insides of the fly. This isn't for a trophy or anything. This is purely just part of this fight. Uh, you will meet up with Tux in the stomach and then we will go from there. So the fight's not quite done yet, but just make your way all the way through the insides here. Okay, so here we are still going to avoid his attacks as well as attack him. It's just going to be on a much smaller scale. So we're still inside of him. Right now we're just avoiding falling poo again. And now we're going to go ahead and attack him in return. And again, you're just following the instructions for what it says. So this one says light all the gas bubbles on fire. You just touch them to light them on fire. This part is incredibly easy compared to the other two parts. Oh, I lied, I just got hit. But yeah, compared to the other two parts, it's, it's much easier. So just keep going through all the sequences until you finally defeat him and take him down.
Okay, and now you should be on a maze part and you just need to make it to the end of the maze to complete this. I will have the solution up in front of you if you get lost or just need the direct path to take. Uh, it should take about a minute or two to get through the whole thing. As you can see, it's not exactly a small maze that we're getting through. All right, so once we, for lack of a better term, exit out of the fly, he will shrink down to the size of about a house fly and start the final part of this fight. This part is going to be incredibly easy. You're just going to be following the instructions given to you, just as before. Just this time, the instructions are going to be so, so much easier. So once you get him down here, we'll put him in a jar and then we'll do a whole bunch of cleanup and then get working on the soccer ball to finish up the story. Okay, so once you finish up that fight, you will get the trophy as well as the button associated with it. And along with that, you will also unlock the existential fly record that is added to your collection. And you will also receive the fly for your bug collection. So now it's basically we're cleaning up the rest of the game until we get to the soccer ball. So before we go any further, we're just going to make sure everybody's on the same page here. Okay, just to reiterate the woes of my life currently, I did not collect the termites when I mentioned them in the video. I just interacted with the log, so I am missing those on this screen. So your score should be either 383 or 384. That's okay, either one it is. You will get the final points at the end that are required. You should have 24 buttons. You should have 40 birds and bugs, 16 flowers, we have all the clouds, cat clues, and photos, 31 records, 18 discs, and 12 costumes. So as long as your screen matches kind of what is shown here, we are good to continue on to this final part. Once you're ready, go ahead and close out of the collection menu and then open up your fast travel, which is gonna be the seagull. And we're gonna actually fly to the entrance of the dark forest. That way we can grab a few things before we head on home. All right, we're gonna exit through the bottom right. So we head towards the house, but not quite going there just yet. And don't go through the gate. Instead, we're gonna go down once. And then just to be on the safe side, go ahead and interact with the cat fur one more time to make sure you get the dialogue that the cat lives nearby and we're gonna leave the gate open at night. So you wanna make sure you do actually get that dialogue so we can get the tire pump out of the tree. 
And then from here, we're just going to go all the way right back to that frog that we've been passing a couple of times. And we just caught that large fly in the jar, so we're going to use that fly in a jar on the frog to feed it. And then there's the needle we need to fix the bike pump so that we can actually inflate the soccer ball. Okay, so now we're going to go up once. And then through the gate. And we're going to head to the apple tree. So we're going to go left once to the house and then up once. And now we can go ahead and get the tire pump out of the tree. So switch to the cat. And we should still be over by the cat fur because this was the last thing we did. And from here, we're just going to go up once and then through the gate and then head to the tree. So we're going to go right once from here and then right again to the house and then up and then climb up the tree. And just as before that we did with the bird, we're just going to go all the way up the branch and then knock the little bike pump out of the tree. Okay, and now we are done with the cat for the rest of the game. So go ahead and switch back to Fanny and then pick up the bike pump off the ground. And now we're going to go left once to the shed. And then head on inside and we're just going to make a couple of things here. So interact with the workbench. And the first thing we're going to make is the bicycle. And this, of course, is going to take the old rubber, the old leather and the old metal. So we have the old rubber, let me see if it's going the other way, it's a little faster, yep, the old leather, and then the old metal. And there we go, we have our little bicycle, and now we are actually going to make the soccer ball here. We're not going to play with it just yet though, so go ahead and interact with the workbench again, and we're just going to do the soccer ball, the bike pump, and the needle. Okay, and there's our soccer ball. And we're not gonna play with it just yet. Again, uh, we are gonna do that as the very last thing to make sure that we don't miss out on anything on the way there. So from here, go ahead and exit out of the shed. We're gonna use the seagulls and we're gonna fly up to the bridge in the top right section. So up in this top right corner, you can see this bridge right here, go ahead and travel to that spot. And then down by the turtle is going to be the next scavenger hunt note, so go ahead and grab that. And now we need to find a snail, which we know there's one sitting on a rock down south. So go ahead and open up your fast travel again. And we're going to fly down to the sunflowers in the bottom right corner. And from here we're going to go left twice. So left past the bridge and then left to the snail and there's our little note so go ahead and pick that up and we'll get clue number four and now we need to find some snake skin so we're going to go uh, oh sorry so we're going to open up our fast travel system and we're just going to go to the bottom left corner here where this log that we kept going in um, or we kept going to i should say is located so the bottom left part and then we're going to go up once and then there's the snake skin, so go ahead and interact with the note to pick it up. Then we're going to go back to the sunflower, so open up your fast travel, and we're going to go to the bottom right. And then we're just going to go up once, and past this little patch of grass, and then up a second time. And then by the skull, of course, is going to be the next note, so go ahead and pick that up to get the next clue. And this one we're just going to go ahead and walk to. So we're going to go up twice. So past the car. And then you should reach the next patch of grass. So from here we're going to go left. And then across the bridge. And then left once more. And then down by the pine cone is going to be the next note. So go ahead and pick that up to read it. And now we're going to head back to the sunflowers. So open up your fast travel and we're going to go down to the bottom right. And there's our note just by the sunflower, so go ahead and pick that up. And we're going to get our final clue here. 
and this is going to open up the desert area more specifically the desert temple so once you have that go ahead and open up your fast travel system and we're going to fly up to the bridge in the top right corner again i know we were just here but we're coming back here again and go ahead and cross over the bridge and then go left once and then go past all these flowers and left one more time and where this rock is down on the bottom is this bike trail because we just made the bike we can now use this and this is just going to be the cruise and cycles 2 mini game that we're going to play so go ahead and interact with that and this is pretty simple you just need to make it from point a to point b on each of the four courses to complete it Okay, and once you finish the last level, you of course will unlock the trophy as well as the button. And you also get the clown costume once you complete this. So there's your little clown costume. And from here, we are going to go left twice. Let me get through all these buttons. There we go. Okay, so now we're going to go left twice. And then our last scavenger hunt that sorry our last scavenger hunt clue that we got was to go behind the flowers here so if you read the clue you can see that just head north of these flowers and then we can get to the desert temple so again you're just going to go straight through the wall and there's going to be a little secret pathway here and then interact with the rock to get another little bug added to your collection and then pick up the record that's sitting in the middle of the pathway And then we're gonna go up once. And just to show you what this area looks like, it is gonna be a three by three grid that we're on. So if you wanna just quickly either number them or label them with letters, going from top to bottom, left to right, to put them in order. That way, when we do this next little puzzle part, you know exactly where you're going. 
But as you can see just above me is just going to be this little panel here and when you interact with these they release a little bit of steam. So ignore that steam right there. So this one released three little puffs of steam and there's a total of eight of these each of which will either release one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And you need to press them in the order based on the puffs of steam that they let out. So steam one, two steams, three steams, etc. So we're gonna do that before we do anything else here. So the first one is gonna be just one to the right and then up once. And go ahead and interact with the panel to release that steam. And the next one, we're just gonna go left twice and then up once and then interact with that panel. And then we're gonna go down twice. And then right once. And again, this one has three, so go ahead and interact with that panel. And then we're gonna go up twice. And then interact with that panel. Then we're gonna go down twice. And then right once. And then interact with that panel. And then we're gonna go left twice. And then up once. And then we're going to go down once. And interact with that panel, of course. And then from here, we're going to go right twice. And if you see the UFO, just ignore it for now. We'll handle that here in just a second. So once you get to the corner, we're going to go up twice. And this is going to be the last panel and interacting with this one will cause the desert temple to actually rise from the ground in the center of this little map area and then we're going to collect some bugs and birds and then get the desert temple going okay so for the birds and the bugs we do have one on here if you labeled your tiles this is either going to be tile c or tile three depending on if you use numbers or letters and of course this one is going to have a road runner which you can see on my screen right here again if it's not showing up for you you can exit and come back a few times until it does but this is a bird that we need to collect so go ahead and interact with it And then we're going to go left twice. And again, just ignore the UFO right here if it does show up for you. So this one is going to have another bird that we're going to need and it's going to use the binoculars. So keep exiting and coming back until it shows up. There we go. And then use your binoculars. And now we have the hummingbird added to our collection. And then we're going to go down once and then interact with the flower on the cactus here to add the cactus flower to your collection. And then we're going to go down once and then right twice. And of course there's this giant flower that's hard to miss. This is going to be the corpse flower. So go ahead and interact with that to make sure it gets added to your collection. And now we're going to go up once and then interact with the rock to get the bug that's underneath it. Okay, so we do need the UFO now, but I'm not quite ready for it just yet. We do need to change our costume to the alien. So we did make the alien costume in the shed much earlier in the game. If you don't have it, it's the one that required the green paint and the basketball so you can make it in the shed if you need to. So now we do need the UFO. So just keep switching screens until it appears. There we go. 
And then once it does, go ahead and stand underneath it, and then it's gonna let its beam out and then obviously bring you up to the ship. And now just go into the room on the right, and in one of the books that we read, the hen that didn't come down from the cow or whatever it was called, we read that aliens really like magnets. So to get the record on this table, we are going to trade it the magnet that we have. And there's another record added to our collection. So go ahead and exit the ship. We don't need anything else here. And then we're going to go up into the desert temple. So again, the desert temple is just going to be in the middle part of this little desert map here. And then head on inside. So for this one, it's going to be your basic dungeon that you will find in most adventure games. We're going to clear the right side first to get the key and then a gem that we need for the final boss. And then we're going to clear the left side to finish the other half of it. So again, you should have your unicorn horn that we picked up earlier. This is going to make it much easier. Um, if you got the fairy as well, you have an extra life. So if you get game over, you don't have to start over from the start. But a little bit on that, on your first playthrough of the temple, if you do get game over, you don't lose anything. So you don't lose the gems you picked up, you don't lose any walls that you've torn down, any bridges that you've built. So progress still kind of keeps it as it should be. You just kind of start from the entrance again. So that's kind of kind of a good thing. So let's go ahead and get this dungeon going. And you don't have to clear all the enemies if you don't want to, it's completely up to you. I'm just gonna go ahead and do it so that we get them out of the way. I don't wanna have to deal with them at all. <laughs> it's just something go wrong and I have to come back here. And again, the unicorn horn, it just one shots all of these little trash enemies here. It doesn't one shot the bosses of course, but that's okay. It's still pretty good that they at least kill the trash mobs just super easily. So we just picked up our first key and this is going to open up the first golden door. So we're just going to backtrack just a little bit. And then there's the door. So go ahead and unlock it with the key. Then pick up the little plank of wood here, and this is what we're gonna use to form a bridge here in just a second. So go ahead and backtrack towards the beginning of the temple, like the entrance of the temple. And over to the left. Okay, so the right side is done, and this is the entrance right here down on the bottom. So now we're gonna go over to the left side and then just interact with the water here to place the bridge down. And there's two paths here, it's kind of hard to see. There's one going left and then there's one going up. So we're gonna go up first. And here we have our first little mini boss and all we're gonna do is fire its little fireballs back at it by simply swinging at them. And you just need to hit them a couple of times with this. It's not gonna be anything super strenuous. <laughs> Okay, and once he's down, go ahead and pick up that blue gem. And there's nothing that is up there for us, so we're just gonna go back down. You can kind of create a little shortcut, but we really don't need it for this run. So just head down and then to the left. And then once you get to the little cheese blocks here, I'm not really sure what else to call them. We're going to go down. And then we're going to grab this key. And then we're going to head back up. And then up again. And then there's the door we need to open with the key we just picked up. And now we have mini boss number two, which is just going to be this little turtle guy. And you can kind of cheese this one as long as he's like facing the right way once he turns a little bit. 
There we go. Is he? I feel like he's being stubborn this time. So as long as he's like bouncing off the wall, just like this, you can get a few shots in. Oh, I died. <laughs> or you could just get hit and die. <laughs> so just to show you, the fairy does come and res you. And I have full health again. Well, I did until I got hit right there. So he should only take about, I would say about 10 hits or so to actually go down. Being really stubborn today. There we go. So pick up the gem once he goes down. Or the skull, excuse me. And then we're going to go up the path and over to the right. And we got some more cheese blocks over here. Now there is a path going up, but we don't need that just yet. So there's a record that we can pick up in the temple, but we need to do the temple a second time to get it. So there's nothing up there just yet. So just head on over to the right. And then clear these guys. And this is the pathway you can unlock if you... Uh, decided to go up from that fire slug that we fought but of course we don't need that right now so just go up once more get rid of all these enemies here before I kill myself and then we're gonna go left once and then just get these guys out of the way super quick and then pick up that green heart and we're gonna go back to the right and now we're going to go up to the final boss. So this one we can kind of cheese. Once you go in, don't move. So just creep your way in. The door will close. Oh, sorry. One more. <laughs> and we're going to put the gems on. And then the next part is going to be the final boss. So for this one, we can kind of cheese it in a very helpful way, I guess, if you will. So when you go up to him, just creep until the scene changes. And then the door, of course, will close behind you. And then just stand right here and don't move. And you can hit all of the canyons or cannonballs that are on this side. There he goes. So it's going to come over. And this will allow you to hit all of the bottom cannonballs without actually getting hit. So it does look like you should be getting hit. You just won't. And this, of course, prevents you from having to dodge everything that's currently in front of you because that's just ridiculous. <laughs> okay, so from here, we're going to go up and then go ahead and pick up that button that's sitting on the floor. And that, of course, unlocks the Desert Temple trophy. And, of course, we just got that button as well. So go down once to exit the uh, temple. Now this next part is optional for trophy and achievement hunters, but if you're going for full 452 points, you do need to do the temple a second time. So when you do it a second time, you will get a record as well as a costume. So again, they're not required for trophies, but I am going to show you where those are if you are going for points. So head on back inside and everything will reset here. And just as a small FYI on this, uh, the second time you play this, if you get game over, your fairy will still come the first time, but the second time the temple will reset. So you won't keep all of the progress that you've made before you died. So just be a bit more careful on this run, but it's gonna be the exact same thing as before. We're gonna clear the right side first and then the left and then get all of our gems and then the final boss. So go over to the right first. And then we're going to grab our key and bring it back to that golden door. And there's our door, so go ahead and unlock it with the key. And we're just going to pick up our little bridge piece up here. So go ahead and go through all the robots. And then grab your plank of wood. And then we're going to head back down towards the entrance. And this pretty much just cleans up the right side here. All 
All right, so with the right side done, now we can go down to the bottom left. And then we're gonna put our bridge down. And again, we're gonna go up first so we can get the fire slug done and out of the way. And it's just as before, we're just gonna hit the fireballs back at him to do some damage. <laughs> or you can just get hit. And again, your fairy will come and save you the first time. So just ignore the fact that I just died. Okay, and pick up the gem once he's down. And we are going to go ahead and do the shortcut here just in case I was not planning on dying <laughs> before getting to this point. And just to show you what this looks like, um, this is the door that we would unlock if we needed to. So if you go back down, there are going to be enemies that spawn. So just be careful. Ouch. <laughs> now we're going to continue over to the left. To get through all these little trash mobs here. And then our little cheese blocks. And we're going to go down first to grab that key. Right, and now we're gonna head up. Now we got another cheese block up here. All right, then carefully make your way through all of these mobs. And of course use the key on the door to open it up. And now we have our little turtle boss again. So I'm gonna see if I can time this a little bit better than what I did last time. So again, you can just kind of cheese it by hitting him as he's rotating here. Wait for him to extend his neck a little bit. I'm gonna wait for him to come back again because I only have one heart left and I don't want to die on this guy. Oh, <laughs> got a little close that time. No, leave me alone. All right, so pick up the skull once you are done with him. And then we're gonna go up and right. And then before we get rid of our cheese blocks here, we are going to go up once to pick up a record. So go ahead and grab that before continuing on. And then we're going to go down and get rid of our cheese blocks here so we can pass forward. And then get rid of our little robot guy. Then we're going to go up. Get rid of our mobs here. And then we're going to go left and pick up that green heart. So just be careful with the mobs here as well. Especially if you're like me and you only have one heart left. And then we're going to go up. And then place all those gems on the pedestal here. And then just as before, we're going to carefully go up and then just stay still as soon as we switch screens. So the door is going to close behind us. Just stay right here and then just aim for whatever cannonballs you can hit from here. And don't worry, you can't get hit in this spot. Okay, so once he goes down, he's going to run away again. And this time, instead of a button, you are going to get the blue demon costume. So go ahead and pick that up. And now we're going to go back down and exit the tunnel. And now we're done here. So just go all the way back down the stairs so we can use our little fast travel system. So open up your seagulls. And now we're going to go up to the mountain. So in the top right corner, we have the bridge here. And then just above it is the mountain. So select that to fast travel to it. And then interact with this large bird nest over here. And then pick up the record that's sitting inside of it. 
And then over by these eggs, we're gonna use the egg we picked up much earlier in the game on it. So we're just gonna pretend that this is a bird egg, even, well, it probably is, I would imagine, but not quite the right bird egg. And then that's all we need for the nest here. So go ahead and exit out. And then we're gonna go down once. And we're gonna go ahead and just enter this little cabin here. And there's a few things we need to pick up here. So first, go ahead and interact with this red book on the table. And this is going to show us how to actually get the Sasquatch to appear. So we need to find a circle of mushrooms and then play this melody on it. So just as a reference, I am going to call this the mushroom melody just to make it easier. But we're going to play this on the thumb piano once we find that circle of mushrooms. So go ahead and exit out of the book. And then interact with the bear rug to pick it up. All right, and then go ahead and interact with the cards on the left table over here. And you're just going to play a basic game of solitaire. So the whole goal is to get all of the suits stacked in the top right corner from ace to king. You will have to get a little lucky on this one because not every game can be won. So just keep going at it until you find one that you can win. There is no limit on the shuffles that you have, so don't be too hesitant about going through the top deck too much. And yeah, once you win that game, you'll get a trophy and we can move on. All right, and once you finish up the game, you will of course unlock the trophy as well as the in-game button for solitaire. There we go, that's all of those. And now go ahead and exit out of this cabin. And we're gonna go right once until we find a little porcupine. And there's our little friend there. And we do have a bird here that we need to collect. So go ahead and exit and enter the area until the binoculars show up. So just do this a couple of times. Here we go. And this is gonna be our mountain chickadee that we are collecting. And then we're gonna go up once and then interact with the rock to add a bug to your collection. And then we're gonna go right once and then interact with the old tree here. And we're going to go right one more time and then interact with the flower to add it to your collection. And now we're going to go down once and then interact with the rock to add yet another bug to your collection. And we're going to go down twice. So down past all of these trees and then down once more to find the circle of mushrooms that we need to get the Sasquatch. So go ahead and stand in the middle of these and then pull out your thumb piano. And again, we're gonna play the mushroom melody here. So this is gonna be the 686 368 62115. All right, and once you do that, of course our little friend will come out and have a dance party with us. And this will unlock the trophy as well as the in-game button. Okay, so once you have all those, we are going to go up once. And then left once. And we should come to a little snowman guy here. Go ahead and interact with him and we're going to get an acorn off of him. And there is a bird here that we need to collect. Obviously you can see that I can use my binoculars here. If you can't use them, again, just exit and come in back into the screen a few times. But this is gonna be the snowy owl that we're gonna collect here. And then we're gonna go up once and then interact with the flower to add the lily of the valley to your collection. And then we're gonna go left three times. So once past the porcupine, and then past the cabin, and then just left once from the cabin. And then interact with the flower to add it to your collection. And there is a bird here that we need to collect, so if you can't see your binoculars, again, we're just gonna exit and come back a couple of times until we can. I definitely just missed that, so give me a second to get it to reappear here. All right, there we go. So once you can use your binoculars, we are going to get the Clark's Nutcracker here. And we're going to go left once. 
and then go ahead and use that acorn on the tree. There is a squirrel in the tree, but it has some boots that we need. So using the acorn will drop those boots down. And this adds the ice boots to your costume collection. And we are gonna need to put these on right now. So go ahead and open up your suitcase. And again, these are the ice boots that we are equipping. And this will allow us to walk in the snow and up mountains and all that sort. So once you have those on, we're gonna go left once. And then we're gonna go up. And then go ahead and climb this little mountain to collect the last flower that we need. And then we're going to go back down. And there is a little Easter egg here if you want to watch it. There's a plastic bag in the tree and you can probably already guess what that's from if you're a big movie fan. I'm going to go ahead and skip that so I'm just going to go down one more time. And go ahead and interact with the rock here to get the last bug you need which is going to be the dirt weevil. And this does complete your bug, flower, and bird collection so that trophy will unlock for you here. You're not going to see it unlock in my video because, again, I didn't realize that I didn't actually get the termites <laughs> back when we were working in the dark forest. All right, and so if you've collected everything up to this here, point, the birds, that flowers, was kind of sad, and bugs but I did fix it. Unlock. So it did not after unlock you get for me this, here because just I as a quick little FYI, our scores will now match, finally. So after spending half of the video with unmatching scores, we are now good to go. So from here, we're just going to finish up a couple of the video games and then play a little game of soccer to finish up the game. From here, we're gonna go up once, and then we're gonna go right four times back to that porcupine we found earlier. So we're gonna go past the squirrel, and then past this little bluebell flower, and then once past the little cabin here. And then once you reach the porcupine, we're gonna go down once, and then go ahead and pick up that Blizzard Beads game that is sitting on the ground right there. And then we're gonna go up once, and then left, and then interact with the skis down here on the bottom. And this is just gonna be a little mini game we're gonna play. You just need to get from the top of the mountain to the bottom. You can hit obstacles. It's not gonna give you a game over or anything. You're, you'll just kind of fall over. Um, I tried to hit one and I actually hit a ramp right there. Let's see. Yeah, so you'll just fall over into the snow and then just hit cross to get back up. So make your way all the way to the bottom to complete this one. Okay, and that gets you the skiing trophy as well as the disc added to your little collection here. And then from here, we only have one more thing to do. So we're going to bring everybody back home. So we're going to use the fast travel with the seagulls and we're going to go back home with both of them. So send Fanny back home and then we're going to send Tux back home. So once Tux and Fanny are back home, we're going to go ahead and open up our game menu by hitting R2 and we're just going to play Blizzard Beads. So if you remember when we were going through the books in the bookcase to read for those 10 minutes or so, we did find a two player cheat code for this game. So go ahead and put that code in. And again, it's going to be left, right, right, up, down, down. And this of course will activate the two player mode. Now you can play with a friend or you can do it yourself. It's completely up to you. Just add a second controller if you do have somebody else to play with. Just know that it will make it tremendously faster if you have a second hand versus doing it yourself. And for this one, it's pretty simple. You're gonna be throwing snowballs at snowmen to break them apart. And then you need to hit them again and to actually collect their head and their body for points. So as you're playing along up in the right hand corner, there is a necklace that you can collect beads for. And when you fill up the necklace, you will skip 10 levels. So you can use this 100%. It will make the game go by much, much quicker. <laughs> Otherwise, you'll be looking at about close to an hour or so for this mini game. If you run out of lives, you won't restart from the beginning, but you will lose any progress you've made to that necklace. So just be careful and keep that in mind as you're going. But yeah, just go through this game and then once you finish, you will get your trophy as well as your button.
All right, so once you beat the game, of course, you will get your trophy as well as your final in-game button. And now we can go ahead and just finish the story with the soccer ball. So there's our button for the game. And now once you are next to Fanny, or if you're playing as Fanny once you're next to Tux, go ahead and just use the soccer ball and this will end the game and pretty much do the final little cutscenes here to ro start rolling the credits. Okay, and once that final sequence ends, you will end up getting the soccer trophy for completing the game. And because you have earned all the trophies up to this point, if you're playing on PlayStation, you will also get your platinum. And if you're just going for in-game final score, all 452 points, you should have all 452 points. So this is just a little thank you saying you did everything you were supposed to do. And yeah, that'll pretty much and this little video for you guys. So thank you all for watching. I do hope that it was helpful. I know it's kind of a weird little indie game that we did this time around, but hey, platinums are platinums. Um, yeah, thank you all. And if you found this video helpful, be sure to leave a like and subscribe for more indie gaming content, and I will see you guys next time.